but for you to say that you're comfortable with fake news getting posted, that that's okay. Tucker, when what you this know is that about, define fake that what this me. is about, well, you can't define fake. Yes, you can. can. What this Lies. is about is Things left-leaning mainstream media <laughs> blaming conservative media for losing the election, losing credibility, and losing readers. Their definition of fake news is anything that doesn't align with their leftist agenda. Freedom of speech is staring down the barrel of a gun loaded by a cancer of global interests that have laid claim to the last remaining fragments of the First Amendment of the United States of America. RT reports former Congressman Ron Paul revealed a list of fake news journalists he claims are responsible for bogus wars and lies about Hillary Clinton's chances of winning the election. Journalists from CNN, the New York Times, and the Guardian are included. According to the report on his website, Ron Paul Liberty Report, this list contains the culprits who told us that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and lied us into multiple bogus wars. Paul claims the list is sourced and holds a lot more water than a list previously released by Melissa Zimdars, who is described by Zero Hedge as an ultra-liberal assistant professor of communications at Merrimack College. Zimdar's list in itself should be considered fake. A list containing actual fake news sites alongside true news gathering alternative view sites that utilize a system of dissecting the mainstream narrative and its long history of fake reporting. Reporting. Fake reporting is nothing new. Just ask Brian Williams. After a ground fire incident in the desert during the Iraq war invasion, I made a mistake in recalling the events of 12 years ago. It did not take long to hear from some brave men and women in the air crews who were also in that desert. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. With the loss of the globalist foothold and the quiet death of the smith munn Act in 2013, propaganda is being waged on all fronts. George Orwell said, Threats to freedom of speech, writing, and action, though often trivial in isolation, are cumulative in their effect and, unless checked, lead to a general disrespect for the rights of the citizen. Is the Constitution a living document, open to interpretation, or is it something that must be read strictly and adhered to regardless of the day? You know, Scott, that is the question that is asked constantly of judges. And so to talk about strict interpretation or living constitution, those are not words I use. And they're not words that I think have much meaning. The very concept of objective truth is fading out of the world. Lies will pass into history, George Orwell. You know, when we first got in there and started looking around and didn't find anything, I see, you get that kind of sinking feeling that, uh oh, and then, Time went on, and then we got tips, you know, I'll never forget the tip that there was crates buried, you know, hidden in the Euphrates River. They said, maybe these are them, and they've sent frogmen in there, there's nothing there. In our age, there is no such thing as keeping out of politics. All issues are political issues, and politics itself is a mass of lies, evasions, folly, hatred, and schizophrenia. George Orwell. You have to represent all of the people, and the people have to believe that. You have to have the rule of law that applies to everyone, not just to some of the people. For those of you who are concerned about my using personal email, I understand. And I am sure they will reach the same conclusion they did when they looked at my emails for the last year. There is no case here. All the war propaganda, all the screaming and lies and hatred comes invariably from people who are not fighting. George Orwell. You're helping us to destroy ISIL, and we will destroy them. You're keeping us safe. The low-key announcement of additional troop deployments marked the 11th by the Obama administration in the last 27 months, each time ranging from 200 to 1,500, such that the total number of U.S. troops and advisors in Iraq will exceed 5,000 by the time the president leaves office. It is up to the individual, emboldened by the rights of a free press and the protection of the liberty passed down from the founders to control their own mind and their own destiny. John Bound for Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday, the 22nd day of November 2016. We're live. Stay with us. Today, I would like to provide the American people with an update on the White House transition and our policy plans for the first 
100 days. Our transition team is working very smoothly, efficiently, and effectively. Truly great and talented men and women, patriots indeed, are being brought in, and many will soon be a part of our government, helping us to make America great again. My agenda will be based on a simple core principle, putting America first. Whether it's producing steel, building cars, or curing disease, I want the next generation of production and innovation to happen right here on our great homeland, America, creating wealth and jobs for American workers. As part of this plan, I've asked my transition team to develop a list of executive actions we can take on day one to restore our laws and bring back our jobs. It's about time. These include the following. On trade, I am going to issue our notification of intent to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a potential disaster for our country. Instead, we will negotiate fair bilateral trade deals that bring jobs and industry back onto American shores. On energy, I will cancel job-killing restrictions on the production of American energy, including shale energy and clean coal, creating many millions of high-paying jobs. That's what we want. That's what we've been waiting for. On regulation, I will formulate a rule which says that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. So important. On national security, I will ask the Department of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to develop a comprehensive plan to protect America's vital infrastructure from cyber attacks and all other form of attacks. On immigration, I will direct the Department of Labor to investigate all abuses of visa programs that undercut the American worker. On ethics reform, as part of our plan to drain the swamp, we will impose a five-year ban on executive officials becoming lobbyists after they leave the administration and a lifetime ban on executive officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. These are just a few of the steps we will take to reform Washington and rebuild our middle class. I will provide more updates in the coming days as we work together to make America great again for everyone, and I mean everyone. It's Tuesday, October 22nd, 2016. We'll be here for the next three hours and 50 plus minutes. And of course, there'll be InfoWars Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Kind of feels like a Friday, even though it's a Tuesday, because a lot of people are going to obviously be taking off the next few days. Uh, we'll have some rebroadcasts, but also some original uh, content and live feeds at InfoWars.com uh, throughout the holiday, obviously, because this is not work for me. Uh, this is a very uh, distinct honor and pleasure to be your host. I talked about it last week, and I'm going to say it again. A lot of very exciting things happening. Trump is delivering on every front. He is looking at appointing and talking about appointing some people I don't like, like Bolton. But on the actual policies that he's already announcing, he is delivering. He also did something particularly delicious yesterday. He called in the corporate prostitute Decepticon fake news media and said, I hate you. You're lying scum. You're rats. Your system is collapsing. And basically, I don't want to work with you, so get out of here. This is beautiful. And I can tell you, laughing at the media, is the times I've talked to Trump off air is something we do. Because they really are a joke. They are the enemy of this country. They must be denigrated. They must be hated. All respect must be removed from them. There's a big new study out via Canada and the UK. There's two studies, actually. Uh, but it's out of uh, Canada with a Canadian ambassador being interviewed, speaking about the studies. Finding that, again, U.S. media is the most untrusted in the world after the European Union-controlled media and the UK media. And, of course, they're all lockstep with political correctness and globalism, a very, very exciting thing. But speaking of delivering, it's now official. You just heard him. On day one, they will signal we are leaving the TPP, which we never entered, but Obama signed us on to. He's also announcing the end of the carbon tax. We've been under seven years, carbon regulations that are a tax, but Congress never ratified it. Congress rejected cap and trade in, in what, 2000 and three. 
So think about that. And then it rejected it again in 2006. Bush has tried it. Obama's tried it. Congress has rejected it. Let me see. It's actually three times I remember. So now, why are we under it? Just like the EU. Almost every member nation never got to vote to enter it, like the UK. How in the hell are they then signed on to it? But let me not belabor that. Let me, that's just one of the big things he's announcing. Bye-bye carbon tax. Bye-bye TPP. Making America rich again. Trump stock market rally breaks all-time record. U.S. stocks hit high. Leaked document shows Trump does actually plan to build a wall. 100, 1,989 miles planned for rapid build. With the 300 miles they've got. That's total wall. Obama admin fines police departments for not hiring non-citizens. No, they're actually hiring illegals to be the police officers. Tim Allen says Hollywood calls Trump a bully, then bullies anyone who supports him. Obama administration shuts down aerial surveillance of the border while saying we're facing an al-Qaeda ISIS imminent attack. Cal exit. Secession effort begins signatures gathering on the California ballot. I say we cut California loose, folks, and build a wall. I'm serious. Cut it loose. Not because of the color of the people that are there, but because it is totally given over to bankruptcy, totally given over to gun control, totally given over to corruption. The elites there all have lawyers that write the laws to basically pay no taxes. While everything is written to rob the average person, it is a disaster. We either somehow recapture California politically or it's a cancer that must be cut off. And I'm serious. I say cut it off. It will descend into bedlam and will look like Mexico City. And that's fine. But we cannot collapse into total tyranny. It's a beautiful state, wonderful people. But I have to tell you, when California finally does collapse, the migration of trendies will bring down any area they come to. Austin is under assault, infested by the laziest, stupidest, dumbest, most arrogant, horrible, politically correct demons. Shuffling, waddling around in circles. Uh, and they're all the banshees and people that moved to California thinking it was the new heaven, the new nirvana, the new cloud nine, the new Valhalla. And then they destroy it even worse, and then they come here. To the point of, I mean, if, I, if my headquarters weren't in Austin, if I didn't have family from here and I wasn't from here, uh, I would be pulling up right now. In fact, I'm actually looking in a few years, leaving these studios and leaving Austin. I, I just can't handle it. They have captured it. Uh, the defecation in the streets, the homeless people everywhere, the, the just nihilistic hatred of anything decent, um, running into the ground, the big mega banks tax exempt, robbing everyone, passing... Uh, Gen 21 to, uh, laws so that, you know, your apartment's 200 feet and costs the same as a 1,000 square foot. I mean, you want to get scammed and butt raped. Uh, Austin, Texas is the place for it to happen. And I'm sorry to use that mild French. I apologize. I'm going to stop it. I love Austin. It's a beautiful town, great people, but there's total election fraud, and you can't unseat the scum, and they just love it. They've, they've destroyed California, and now they're destroying my beloved Texas. Cal Egg's secession effort begins signature gathering on the California ballot. Now, that's just some of the news on that front. Let me give you the splendid, delicious news. Well, let me just mention this, and I'll cover it after break. President-elect slams smug media in face-to-face -face at Trump Tower. We're in a room of liars. The deceitful, dishonest media who got it all wrong. Supposed to be an off-the-record meeting, but the Trump folks have confirmed this went on. He told them, look, I hate you. You hate me. Let's just be honest. You work for corporate execs that are fools. You've bankrupted yourselves. You have no credibility. And I just want to declare that you're scum. <laughs> That's exactly what I'd tell them. The New York Times and stuff want to talk to me. I go, are you talking to me as a prop to pretend we're doing an interview? And I loved watching so-called journalists like Stephanopoulos and people scurrying out of there. And Wolf Blitzer looked like he'd been flogged with a cat or nine tails when he left. Donald Trump's media summit was an effing firing squad. <laughs> he told Jeff Zucker, quote, I hate your network. Everyone at CNN is a liar and you should be ashamed. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry. This is just too good. Oh, it's too good. Trump knows exactly what to do. We must bankrupt these organizations. They're already financed by kingpins and drug dealers and every other criminal organization you can imagine. They want to bring the country down. You're going down. Whatever little sponsorship you've got left, everybody has to contact your sponsors and say, I will never use your product if I see your ad on there one more time. You want to bring down America? We're going to get in your face. We're going to lean on you and see how you like it, you little bullies. You bullied this country around a little too long. Now, there's a story from Steve Watson, and Breitbart is chewing him up for this, and that's his chief strategist. Obviously, there's some separation there with the writers. I don't control what my writers write. I just hire them because they're patriots and you know, have a history of telling the truth. But uh, Trump gives Hillary a pass. Breitbart leads with criticism. And this is what Conway is saying, that all he wants to be nice to her until he gets in. A Senator Sessions appointment means that's not the case. But just let Trump get in in 58 days, then we'll see what happens. But it's not up to Trump. It's to be up to the Attorney General and Justice. And I got a feeling justice is going to be served. They'll be back. Stay with us. We have the new product at InfoWarsLife.com, BioTrue Selenium. We've had so many requests over the years for selenium, and just recently we were able to source a certified organic bioavailable selenium from mustard seed extract. When you take selenium in the body, it actually benefits the detoxification systems in your body. It helps balance the thyroid gland. It helps detoxify. Selenium is another one of those absolute must-haves. The highest concentration of selenium is in the thyroid gland, but it's actually used all over the body. As a matter of fact, there's 25 genes in the body that are directly dependent upon selenium. So it really is a all-around nutrient that everybody really needs. I'm taking it now every day. This is so key. BioTrue Selenium is the product, the best selenium that we could bring you. We believe it's the best out there at a very, very low price. Exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. But there was an article last Friday in Hollywood Reporter that is so important where Steve Bannon, the chief strategist for President-elect Trump, lays it out that globalism was designed to make us poor and set up this elite system for rich families to control everything. And that America is going to absolutely now lead the world out of this with incredible prosperity. And they have the actuaries and the numbers with cutting taxes on working class people that will bring back Americana under the Republican Party. But he says we've got to purge the Republicans of the establishment people and we've got to deliver to the people and we will get a majority vote from whites, Hispanics, blacks, you name it. Because it'll be based on having a sovereign, prosperous nation, not one where the government takes the wealth from the middle class and then redistributes it to a growing, dumbed down, giant underpopulation made up of every race of human. If you want human liberty, if you want freedom, if you want self-determination, if you want to be able to control at least a small part of your own destiny, we are brothers, we are sisters in arms together in the great quest for free association, free will, and the right for self-determination. I salute you, and again, thank you for taking the info war, which you are the heart of, to the next level, and to encourage you to continue right through this Thanksgiving to share the information with your friends and family, to share the articles, the videos, the URLs, the podcast, and to support the broadcast by getting the amazing pro-Second Amendment apparel, the pro-Trump apparel, the pro-nationalism apparel, the non-GMO heirloom seeds, the high-quality water filtration systems, the amazing supplements and nutraceuticals, which are running 30 to 50% off right through this week with every day having a loss leader special at InfoWarsStore.com. Check it out today and please continue to support this operation. Electrify your day with Secret 12. It's like lightning in a bottle. We all have days in which we just can't seem to perform at the level we'd like to. InfoWars Live Secret 12 is designed to naturally energize your body and mind with two great tasting and super high quality forms of vitamin B12. Proper vitamin and nutrient intake is essential to keep your body functioning at optimum levels. The reality is, it's hard to take in the proper amount of vitamins we need each day with our modern diets. Secret 12 by InfoWars Live is an easy way to naturally 
essentially upgrade your vitamin B12 intake and support your body's natural systems. It pairs two forms of vitamin B12 into one explosive formula. Vitamin B12 supports healthy energy levels through red blood cell formation and aiding in the body's natural processes, but it also assists with many other functions of the body. Electrify your mind and body and take your health to the next level. Experience the power of Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. party is going to be extinct. It's going to be relegated to the South, a party of old, racist, decrepit, baby boomer pieces of garbage. To quote the Democrats. To quote H. Skrelix. But it didn't work, did it? Instead, they're talking about the Democratic Party going extinct and the Republican establishment being run out on a rail or just absorbed by the Trumpian revolution. You know, there's a big article out dealing with Trump's son-in-law, who is one of his top advisors, Jared Kushner. And the headline from Forbes is that he won Trump the White House. That's the headline on DrudgeReport.com. You can see the cover of Forbes. And I think to a certain extent that's true because he got Trump early on to mainly focus on the internet and to realize to see Trump's not big on the internet, that that was already the new media. They give him the credit for doing early videos that got 75 million views and stuff like that. Folks, we've got Trump. 500 million views on our videos about Trump. I mean, I'm not trying to get credit for that. I'm just stating if Forbes thinks 75 million views is a big deal, uh, I can show them where the views are. Or Drudge probably sent, I don't know, 20 million people a day sometimes to pro-Trump info, but none of us get the credit. It's the globalists discrediting themselves and being so arrogant that gets the credit, and then it's the leakers. But the reason it is important to look at how we won this is so that we continue to repeat it and aren't arrogant. We have to deliver tax cuts. We have to deliver at least spending freezes. And we have to absolutely secure our borders. And we have to cut the billion-dollar fighter programs that are pieces of crap and actually have a strong defense military. And of course, we have to get fair tariff deals, and we'll have such prosperity and such a boom that the era of socialism will be broken worldwide, and the era of the robber barons will be over. And again, you had a lot of followers that kind of believed the mainstream media and thought it was invincible, but a lot of the reporters and people working for the system, they didn't really believe in it. They didn't like what was happening. And you're seeing that facade really collapse now. Now, there are the bitter, bitter, bitter people who believe in the whole false cosmology. They're going to become more psychopathic. And I'm going to talk about that in the next break, next segment. But just look at these numbers. Democratic Party going extinct. Administration is disintegrating. They don't have any of their top people. Everyone basically hates them. Dems. Serving donor class, not working class. Representative Ryan admits. And again, they are just so disconnected, so arrogant, they think they're invincible. Look at this headline. 96% hopeful. Polls show tremendous confidence in President Trump. And all the national polls show people that thought he would destroy the planet day one are now seeing the stock market go up. They're seeing confidence. They're seeing Ford announce it's coming back. Uh, they're seeing... Apple talk about coming back. And then the media spins it and says, well, it was never clear that Ford was going to go to Mexico. So this isn't really a victory. Oh, really? They'd said they were going to Mexico with that SUV factory. The point is, is that there are economic things we can do to strengthen this nation and not just sell the country out. And they're still upset that's happening. And that's why they're so incredibly discredited. You can see that big scientific poll from Pew Research up on Infowars.com. I already talked about him delivering on the announcement day one in 58 days when he gets in to pull out of TPP, a foreign global government, to end the carbon taxes. And they go, you're not allowed to do that, Holland, 
the president of France lectured Trump yesterday from the national podium uh, in France, from the royal palace. Said, you're not allowed to do that. No matter what you say, you're in it. Congress never voted to put us into that unilaterally. It's a fraud. But that's the arrogance with the communist Chinese and the French president, the socialist dirtbag, lecturing us. Now, when we come back, I want to read more of the quotes. And again, I don't believe mainstream media, but more than 20 agencies were represented there. And they all basically said the same thing. So now you know it's true. Plus, it fits with what I know Trump basically says behind the scenes. He just called him in and said, you're scum, you're liars, you're delusional. No one watches you. Why are you so arrogant? Why did you lie about me so much? Why do you put out fake tweets? Why do you put out fake statements? What the hell is Bloomberg doing, putting out fake tweets? What is your problem? Don't you know the American people see through you? How dare you not want to turn the economy back on so you can squat on top of people? That's what's going on behind the scenes. It's beautiful. They need to be read the riot act. Hey, scum, we see you. We know who you are, dirtbags. All right, let's get right into the really big, important news, obviously. Incredibly exciting things happening. Uh, Fukushima dodged a bullet, but narrowly. Be like a bullet going through your hair and, you know, cutting a swath through your hair, but not hitting you in the skull. Japan reported a 7.8. U.S. Geological saying 7.3, 7.6. It varied. That's about the strength that hit, what, five, six years ago and made those reactors explode that are still melting down into the Pacific Ocean today. And they were reporting that the tsunami uh, was going to have be 10 feet or higher when it came in, but it was only a few feet high, caused some flooding, but uh, not any um, you know, massive damage like you saw in that dramatic, dramatic footage that we all witnessed when, when the uh, big tsunami hit Fukushima before. So that is certainly, certainly some good news there. Uh, continuing, uh, we are having Black Friday specials that kick off each day and that run for 24 hours right through Friday, I guess right through the weekend. And today, it is Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. Now, obviously, you would take potassium iodide, but this is beyond that. It's pure iodine, true iodine, atomic iodine that goes into the thyroid and other glands so that you don't absorb the fluoride and the other garbage. And during a radiological event, uh, the radioactive iodine is the most common uh, fallout. But see, that's just an example. You want your thyroid filled with good iodine all the time so it's not absorbing all the other trash that's out there. Because it operates off halogen, off iodine. If it doesn't have that, it will absorb anything else to operate on. And you just see the record thyroid problems out there and the things that are going on. Now, I've lost so much weight, been so much healthier uh, now that I've been taking it four years. And I religiously take it now. And it's almost a crutch because... I'm going to be honest, I work out now a third of what I used to. And with the Super Mel Vitality and Survival Shield X2 and things like that, and the DNA force I take daily now, it's really a joke. That I only work out now two or three times a week, and I was working out six, seven days a week, and it just wasn't having the same effect. It was all because of my whole metabolic system was not getting what it needed. So this is truly symbiotic. You get great products. You, you fund the tip of the spear operation, fighting the globalists. I want to thank you all for your support. Black Friday week, free speech special, 30% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine. We have the all-new Brain Force Plus has arrived. Now 20% more in each bottle and a stronger formula on top of that. What's plus plus, really. Bio PCA, Black Friday special, started yesterday. We're extending it a few days. 25% off on our ultimate new hair, skin, and nails formula. At $19.95, it is a joke-level deal. It's now $14.96. That doesn't even make any money on that. That's a lost leader right now. Again, leading competitors have the same stuff in it and are $45, 50 $60 for one ingredient that's in it. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, that's what we do. I mean, take knockout. We take nine things that are known to help you give deep, restful, regenerating sleep like lemon balm and chamomile and L-tryptophan and valerian root and melatonin and more. I remember saying a few years ago, I was sitting there sometimes having trouble sleeping, and my kids would sometimes too, so i give them a little melatonin tablet or a little bit of valerian root. And I was like, why am I buying this tincture from Whole Foods? 
and this other thing, and this is $19, and this is $19, and I'm giving them both. Because you know, together it works better, and I'm like, and, I, and I'm taking two. That's 40 bucks. Let's see how much this stuff costs, organic, high quality. We went out and found out we could put nine things in there, all the same dose as what other people do. It would cost probably $100 and sell it for 1995 That's what we do. Super high quality, organic. It's an amazing deal. Infowarslife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. And thank you for all the great five-star reviews for the products on third-party site, Power Reviews and others. Be sure and read those reviews for yourself. And it is your purchases that make everything we do here possible. So I want to thank you all again. And then we're going to try to help get your taxes cut. Again, it's all symbiotic. It's a non-zero-sum game. A 360 win is the coin, uh, coin of the realm here these days. And I'm, I'm, I'm even hearing more in the culture now about 360 wins and wins all around. And, you know, what do you call a win where, where everybody wins? It's a 360 win. And you can really do that, folks, with technology and what we've got. The problem is some people are going to be better than you or I at certain things. They're going to be more beautiful. They're going to be faster. They're going to be taller. They're going to be stronger. We're going to have gifts they don't have. Together, we work together to build a better world. But you have to let people be shine. You have to let people be winners. You have to let the best kids at something get the trophy. And not just give everyone a participation trophy. And tell your kids, sorry, you get a piece of pizza. Because then kids learn to fail, and they learn to win. But if you don't learn how to fail and deal with it, you become a butthurt wimp. And I'm telling you, it is basket case world out there, where about half the people, you can't criticize them, you can't tell them to fix something, you can't tell them to change something, or they take it personal. And that is the mark of losers. They are instilling that on in us on purpose. They're trying to make the military where it can't chew people out or Put people through dangerous situations. Well, then we're going to have a bunch of wimps, folks. You can't put the troops in red high heels and have them learn how to be trannies. And I'm not bashing trannies. The point is that's not where trannies are supposed to be. This is all just a mentally ill joke. But they take away our basic rights and give us these faux rights. I'm going to get into this right now. So... I'm going to get into fake news. I'm going to get into the leftist bullying. I want to break down the fact that their bullying went so far, it caused people to basically rebel. And as they saw people to start to wake up, they thought, oh, we better bully harder. Most people went along with political correctness just out of hospitality, just out of being nice. And it was done by increment early on with reasonable sounding things to set the precedent. But as it got over the top, people are done. They have broken with you. They will never listen to you again. There's no gimmick you can push that'll work. Even when the mainstream media tells the truth now, people don't listen to it. They do not believe it. You have self-immolated. You have blown yourselves up. You have poured five gallons of gasoline on yourselves and struck a match. And you didn't do it for a good cause, like a Buddhist monk. You did it for a bunch of disconnected, arrogant, corporate lackeys who thought they were going to shut down competition and show up innovation worldwide and play technocrat. Well, they may get their goal someday, but not without a hell of a fight. And it's hard to hold back innovation. It's hard to hold back people that want to be free. You may get 30, 40, 50% of people to be mind-numb, drooling zombies. But the 30, 40, 50% that aren't zombies are going to take action and wreck your world, Cupcake. If 3 or 4% of us take action against you politically and economically, we'll devastate you. But you're not facing 3 to 5% like you were in the Revolutionary War in 1776, 1782. You are now facing, my friends, 30% that are hardcore awake, who are now becoming confident, who are now reaching out to others. You cannot beat us. You can fight us. You can protract this for a long time. But incontrovertible, you have lost. You have failed. History shows it. The facts bear it out. Current analyses show it to be conclusive. 
The only way you can win is killing everyone in a giant nuclear war and releasing bioweapons. You can, the elite currently can still attempt to kill everybody. It's the only power they have left. Long term, they'll lose. And as long as we don't let the technocracy fully get in place, so the elite controls stuff by computer and by robot, as long as we keep humans involved in the chain of command, the military is not going to let you do that. And I'm not saying they're angels. They're mercenaries, a lot of them. They want money. They want power. But they don't want to piss on prosperity and hurt grandma. They're more than happy to kill jihadis and stuff like that. But they're not looking to mount America's head on the wall. And you've now picked fights with the people that do the hanging. One good part of that movie, uh, Elysium, when the corrupt president is uh, bitching out her illegal mercenary commander. I could have you hung for what you've done. He goes, oh, really? Stabs her right in the neck and he goes, we do the hanging around here. But there's all these disconnected wimps, these technocrats, never killed anybody, never broke anybody's neck, never punched somebody's nose into their head, never done anything, and they just sit here shooting their mouths off at everybody about how tough they are and how they're going to dominate everybody. No, you're not. Bully. You're not even good at bullying. I've had people cussing me out in public, you know, walking up, brandishing guns, you name it, since Trump lost in Austin. And guess what? They always run off. They show the gun and then run off. They, they drive by and cuss at me and then drive off. Some of it's on tape. I'm just standing there. I'm not going anywhere. That said, though, I'm going to go ahead and set it up and go with full-time security. Not that I'm living in fear, but I have to go ahead and do it because, quite frankly, this is too important an operation. But that goes into expensing and things, and I don't want to cut back from what we do here in the operations. I want to bring in as much money as possible to throw every bit of coal in that furnace we can to get this locomotive of freedom going as fast as it can at ramming speed. I want as much wind in our sails to take us as fast as we can. It's all about the win, folks, and not winning because I want to be a, quote, winner like some trophy from a football game, but really defeating the tyrants. And that's the epic holy grail opportunity that Donald J. Trump has right now. It's amazing. So here is a clip of Tim Allen, the man's man, just a good, wholesome guy, not a right winger, not a left winger. I love to get him on the show. We never try, but let's try. Uh, on Fox, just saying there is no information on Trump. Everything they say about him isn't true. You try to go find the statements, and it's always not what he said. It's taken out of context. It's twisted. And so the very people bullying everyone and uh, are the ones saying that Trump is a bully. Here it is. So, Gigi Hadid right. mocking our next first lady. Appropriate or not? I don't think it's appropriate in that venue. But again, this is a... It's a I, I'm not a spokesman for Hollywood. I'm, I'm a comedian. <laughs> right. So I, I, I get to tour around the country and I do comedy and I do a show that leans. We have a point of view. I think Your character is a conservative. Well, a point of view, but it's written by liberals. We have a liberal staff. We have conservatives. That goes without saying. That's, that's redundant. But they're, they, we have a sense of humor about ourselves and there's a point of view and there's a, a place to do it. What I think is what I find odd in Hollywood is that they didn't like Trump because he was a bully. But if you side, if you had any kind of inkling that you were for Trump, you got bullied for doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's where this, it, it gets a little um, hypocritical to me, is that you, you can now bully people. And you're always on the defense with this. But mostly what I'm finding is there's no source material for, for comedians. That's it. There's no source material. There's nothing there. Bloomberg, again, on Sunday, put out a tweet. I couldn't believe it. It was just a made-up tweet saying, yeah, I ripped off 6,000 young people. Ah, settled it, big deal. Donald Trump, quote, tweeted. What the hell? I mean, when Donald Trump does stuff that's real, like, oh, yeah, Snowden's a traitor, kill him. No, Trump, you're wrong. Or let him into an iPhone, give him a warrant. It's, they want the keys to all the iPhones, Trump. I mean, you know, he's got blind spots, we all do. But there's not much there after that that isn't BS. And that's what's frustrating. There's a lot of people run up to me and go, he hates gay people. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, where's the quote? He did, he does. I quite frankly thought it was over the top, but he was like waving an LGBT flag at the RNC and got everybody to clap saying we've got to be nice to all the gay people now. And the Republicans are all, yeah. I just thought it was like, wow, he's got conservatives doing stuff they never do. And then the left just says he hates gay people. It, it, I mean, 
It's the upside down level of it all that makes your head spin. I mean, if they got away with these lies, we'd really be in trouble. The lies blew up in their face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trump's trying to unify people. But first, we've got to have a country to do it. Nobody's got open borders like this. They turn it into some personal attack. I can't just move to England or Mexico and just say, I'm here to have my baby free. They'd say, you're crazy. But you can come here and do it. You can go to Germany and do it. It's, it's, it and again, they get the minorities in, they make them the majority, and they wind them up to be racist. We've got to change all that. Federal judge came out and told a bunch of bitching illegals, you know, hey, if you don't like Trump being the president, go to another country. Don't come here and bitch about it all day. I don't like go to China and complain about their president, even though he's not even elected. What are the communist Chinese doing involved in our elections? Again, how did we get to this point? Now, speaking of bullying, we're going to go to break here in a minute. I'm going to come back and get into it. And I want to get more into these quotes from Trump. The election is getting people uninvited to Thanksgiving. Americans say the idea of talking politics Thanksgiving is stressing them out. And it just goes on from there. I personally have been noticing this, seeing it. Everybody in the office says it's happening to them. And I want to make this point. I have hired Democrats before. I have thought we could wake them up. I have family friends and long-term friends that are liberals. I'm tolerant. I just think it's kind of a joke what they believe and how they've been conned. I'm nice to them. I have had people say, I'm not coming to your Thanksgiving, even though they've come other years, because of Trump. And I have had friends of the family say, I'm not coming to visit you this Christmas because we're not friends anymore. And I mean people that I've known for over a decade that have told me, I'm sorry, I can't associate with you. Thank you for letting me know what type of person you were. I was tolerating you. And if this shows you're in a cult, because you're in a cult, folks, when you don't associate with somebody because you disagree with the Republican or Democratic views. By the way, I've even got some people in the office freaking out over uh, the former head of the campaign, Conway, going on TV and saying, oh, Trump, you know, thinks Hillary's been through enough. He's not planning to go after her. Well, it's not the president's job to prosecute people. It's the attorney general he appoints. And Jeff Sessions is the number one constitutional attack dog. And that signals he's going to do the right thing and step aside politically and not be involved. Now, quite frankly, I think the Democrats are smart enough to understand something, so I'll say this. Trump doesn't want to be political. He doesn't want to violate the law, so he's stepping aside. But Trump is very justice-oriented. That means vindictive in their nomenclature. And it is my belief that he's going to step aside and let the AG and or state AGs as well go after Hillary. Now, he doesn't want to telegraph that because then what happens? Let's think, folks. Who gives a pardon in the 58 days he's got left? Barack Hussein Obama. And then there's a pardon for Hitler. -y. So they want to either let him do the pardon and force that out in the open, or regardless, they're going to go ahead with a strong AG. All Trump can do is put an AG in of high credibility and high moral standing, who always does what he says he'll do. And probably one of the most honorable people in Congress is Walter Jones or Jeff Sessions. Congressman Jones and Jeff Sessions are known for doing exactly what they say they'll do to a compulsive level like Ron Paul. I mean, it's compulsive. Because I'm the type of guy that does what I say I'm going to do, but if things really change and it's going to hurt somebody if I do what I said I'll do, I'll try to explain to them, hey, I think we should do something different. Those guys won't even argue it. They'll just do it no matter what. Very dogged is the way I would describe it. You talk about attack dogs, I mean, this is it. Like a bunch of hounds going after, you know, a wolf or whatever. So it's on. It's on. And they know that. And I would expect Trump to not be sitting there poking Hillary and poking um, Obama. And, and here's the deal. I was told over a week ago by multiple sources 
I talked to another source there by those. He checked. He said, yeah, no, that's dead on. Chelsea is over there. Chelsea's been meeting uh, with Trump's uh, daughter, oldest daughter, and uh, Kushner's uh, uh, wife, and is just begging, please don't indict my mommy and my daddy. And the word is then the Democrats will leave Trump alone if they win in four or eight years and they'll do the same cover your butt program. Well, you know what? Trump doesn't need that. Trump isn't going to run a corrupt ship. Trump really runs things by the book, has top law firms certify everything. He's firing all the lobbyists right now, again, delivering on every promise. So this is a big deal. This is a big deal. You know, I said I'd get into the bullying, and we're going to do that when we start the next hour. Because all over the country, people I know, staff here, I mean, multiple crew members are not having Thanksgiving with their parents. They're not having Thanksgiving with their children. Maybe I can get some of them to actually come on air. I didn't ask one of them yesterday if he wanted to tell a story on air. And I mean, I know his parents, too. They're nice people, man, but they are flipped out. Especially one guy's mom is to the point that she didn't. I mean, I know people aren't getting out of bed, folks. We're talking almost two weeks into this, and people are in their beds. I mean, this is, this is crazy town. This is crazy town, folks. Because they really believe a guy that loves Hitler just got elected. They, they believe all the crap. And they're the minority, but they are susceptible. And I'll tell you who they mainly are. It's white people. The really weird stuff I'm getting from white people, mainly white liberals and baby boomers who just, they, they've always been the heroes their whole lives. They were fighting the right wingers. They were fighting the, you know, this and that. And they just are heroes in their minds. And they have no respect for anybody else or their views or their opinions. And I've had two different people I know who hardly ever even seen but, you know, who are, I just invite to come over because I don't do a lot of entertaining, but I do around Christmas and other holidays. I'll have like 50 people at my house sometimes. And they're like, oh, we're not going to be coming. And I'm like, all right. And then like another email, you know, because Trump, yeah, you understand, right? I'm like, oh, well, don't let the door hit you on your ass out the door. Um, I am pretty darn reclusive. And I only have people around like twice a year or, you know, here and there for my, for my kids to have pool parties or whatever. So, the Republican Party was going to be extinct. I wouldn't care if it was all those blue blood scumbags up there, but no, uh, the Paul Ryan Party is going extinct, and who else is going extinct is the Democratic Party. Kit Daniels' article up on Infowars.com. So, if you just joined us, I was getting into people I've known for a decade, people I've known for longer than that, who you just tacitly a couple times a year, oh, hey, we're going to have a Thanksgiving party the day before or whatever, uh, you're welcome to come over. We're going to grill steaks or whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just too upset about the Trump thing. Great. You just need to say you're not coming over. But thank you for letting me know you don't like me. I guess you see me as a winner or whatever. God forbid you get your taxes cut. And then, like I said, I've got multiple crew members who are not going to have dinner with their parents who are baby boomers because it's just too uncomfortable. And they're told, by the way, if you're coming over for Thanksgiving, keep your mouth shut. Well, you know what? We're just not coming over to Thanksgiving. And so during the next break, I'm going to go ask some of these folks if they want to come on and talk about this. And I want to open the phones up specifically on two topics. Now, I don't screen the calls. That means you can disagree or agree, but I do get on topics sometimes. So here's what I'd like you to call in on, and this only. Are you upset about Conway going on TV? and saying Trump's not going to go after Hillary. That's not politicking. That's not lying, because technically the president isn't the one that does that. It's, it's the attorney general. The president needs to be hands off now so that this isn't a, uh, I mean, it's unprecedented to say she should be in jail, she should be locked up, she's a criminal during the debates and on TV dozens of times. That's why we love Trump. Now, the guy that'll do that publicly, do you think he's really going to back off Hillary? No, there's going to be a new inspector investigation, special prosecutor. There's going to be AG investigations. No matter if they try to block the confirmation over racism made up crap on Jeff Sessions, Senator Sessions. But regardless, maybe you think there is a problem with that. I'd like to hear from you on that subject. That's number one. Number two, this is just as important. Have you had liberals, uh, fascists that have hijacked the word liberal, get in your face over Trump winning? Have you had your boss get in your face, your employees get in your face? Have you, have you had people threaten you like I have? A uh, guy brandish a gun, show me his gun, try to threaten me in a parking lot. I'm just like, what the hell is your problem, dude? 
uh, that happens Saturday. Have you experienced this bizarreness? And have you had family say, hey, if you're coming to Thanksgiving, keep your mouth shut. I mean, I have crew members, two of them told me. But I, I know one of them's parents really nice folks. She's like, yeah, you better not talk about politics if you come, okay? Just, you know, mom's real upset right now. So promise me to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, I don't think I'll be coming over. How insulting is this? But again, they believe in their cosmology. It's okay. This has never before happened in modern history. What happened to us as a country? I want to hear from you about just this incredible backlash, this mental illness that's in the news. I mean, they're actually reporting, but I'm witnessing it. The election is getting people uninvited to Thanksgiving, USA Today. Trump and Clinton supporters are getting uninvited from Thanksgiving dinners because of their political views. Uh, I don't know anybody that's conservative saying liberals can't come over. We want you to come over so we can deprogram you. The thing is, you don't want to hear it from us because you're the intellectuals that listen to Rachel Maddow, who wears ironic glasses and has a neck that resembles a ostrich. People keep thinking Rachel Maddow is a man. I think, I think it's an ostrich. I don't know. It's just a joke. Um, and then I've got more fake news discovered. Um, Michael Zimmerman pointed this out to me. It's incredible. That's coming up on the other side as well. The toll-free number to join us. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And then we've got Margaret Howe. And we've got... Joe Biggs coming in with a bunch of huge news straight ahead. And Kanye West has been hospitalized for supporting Trump. All right, we're about to take your phone calls at 800-259-9231 on the report out of USA Today that I personally am witnessing myself. I have friends, I have family that have been uninvited to Thanksgiving, uninvited to Christmas. I have crew members, just parents I know that are nice people but are so brainwashed that they've said, hey, maybe you shouldn't come to Thanksgiving if you're going to bring up politics, which means they bring it up, you sit there and take it. This is happening. And I've had people threaten me on the street. I had a guy follow me out of a restaurant and, sh and brandish his concealed carrier. I don't know if he had a license for it, but he did it. And I was just like, I didn't even say anything to him. I'm like, what, the, what are you doing? And he thought he was scaring me. I mean, as soon as he noticed I wasn't scared, I had my mouth hanging up and he ran around the corner. But... This is the mental illness these people are involved in. I've been dehumanized. You've been dehumanized. We don't count now. So they can act however they want, whenever they want. And that's why Trump understands you can't grovel to these people anymore. That only encourages them. So he invited a whole bunch of media executives, including the head of CNN, Zucker, to Trump Tower. President-elect slams smug media in face-to-face -face Trump Tower meeting. We're in a room of liars, the deceitful, dishonest media who got it all wrong. That's Infowars.com. Here is the New York Post. Donald Trump's media summit was an effing firing squad. Well, they are traitors. Donald Trump scolded media big shots during an off-the-record Trump Tower sit-down Monday. Sources told the Post. It was an effing firing squad, one source told the encounter. Trump started with CNN Jeff Zucker. He said, I hate your network. Everyone at CNN is a liar. You should be ashamed, the source said. The meeting was a total disaster. Trump went on to say, I hate you. <laughs> you know what Trump says to patriots on the phone? I love you. It's just so real, folks. <laughs> oh, what an upside down world where the president calls me and says, I love you. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. We're going to cut those taxes and make America great again. Oh, just wait, Alex. That's why the elite are crapping themselves. We were already the greatest country in the world. We had, by the 90s, half the world's wealth. And most of it was in the middle class. We already lost like 15, 16% of that. By the mid 50s, it was like 80%. And so I could get the argument. Hey, we're like too rich. Let's help people around the world. That's how they sold good people on globalism. But that's mid-level. At the high level, it's about austerity worldwide, making us poor too. We're going back to Americanism, not globalism. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. And it just continues. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it was a total disaster. The TV execs and anchors went 
in their thinking they would be discussing the access they would get to the Trump administration, but instead they got a Trump-style dressing down the sources added. And what's great about this is the, the most arrogant of them was Wolf Blitzer, who got on TV a week and a half ago when Trump went to uh, D.C. and said, he doesn't tell us his itinerary or where he's going. This is outrageous. I won't stand for this. I'm filing a complaint. So Trump said, will you come on to Trump Tower, sweetheart? Walked him in there and said, listen, you little sniveller. Protocol's all over. I'm the president. I'll go eat where I want. I'll do what I want. And I'm not going to tell you where I'm going for my safety. What the hell does that mean? You think it's safe for us to always say where we're going? The Secret Service for decades hasn't wanted to tell the press the itinerary. You're not in the driver's seat anymore. Nobody listens to you. Nobody respects you. The small audience you have hates my guts and hates the American people's guts. So understand this. I'm here to tell you I know you're a piece of crap and I hate you. Now get out of my office. Trump reportedly, because I've not, I told people that were there, screaming at these people. The real Donald Trump. Wouldn't you love to see that? They lie about his family. They lie about America. They lie about us. They put fake quotes out. They stir up race war. They stir up, well, cops are getting killed. That's their fault because, you know, cops are bad. These are outrageously evil people, folks, and you got to dress them down. The only hope they've got is that, is that, is that the executives get it through their head and realize they're going to totally collapse if they don't stop. The problem is they're so committed to globalism and so committed to crony monopoly systems that they're not going to stop. So we have to fully withdraw all support from them. And anytime we speak of them, even covering an article, we say the traitor, deceptive, evil media, the fake media, <clears throat> the name they tried to, I've, I've looked for the ultimate name, not prostitutes, not Decepticon media, not collaborator media, not enemy media. Not corporate media, not deceiver media, not UN media. Why didn't I see it? The fake media. The name, they've got the president pushing and the communist Chinese pushing and all the world telling us we're fake, we're dumb, we elected Trump. Oh, we're, we're so stupid. Oh, we're such big idiots. Oh, 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 oh. Fake media, fake media, fake media, fake media. They're the fake media. We're the completely real media. We don't lie about stuff. It's like the fake media came out. Like, let's get that report. I want to play that coming up from Ron Paul. Shocking fake news exposed by Ron Paul. And he goes, exactly what, what we've said. It's mainstream media that's fake, that lied us into the wars, that lies about all this other garbage. It goes on and on and on. And now Kanye West, I used to call Kanye or Kanye West, gets out and says, hey, Trump hadn't really done anything. Let's give him a chance. He gets such a backlash from his idiot supporters that he, quote, oh, he's gone into a mental institution. He's had a mental breakdown. That's how they always do it. Oh, my gosh, that's what his executives have told him. We are so close, folks. This whole damn breaking, this whole damn falling of bullying and control. Joe Biggs has just run into the control room. He's got some breaking news for us, Joe. Well, no, I wanted to comment on what you were saying really quick. Uh, I tweeted out yesterday, someone who witnessed real Donald Trump chewing out the line media at Trump Tower today said it was like an effing firing squad. And Anthony Cumia wrote back to me and made a really good point I thought I'd bring up. It says, notice how the media has to create this Nazi image of Trump lining up media personalities and shooting them. They can't stop. F them. That's right. And, and, and look, they have lied about him. He wouldn't be real. That's Listen, when CNN calls here now, and, and my producer goes, listen, they've been begging, they really want you on. I go get on the phone, and I say, is it going to be live? No, Mr. Jones. Or they'll lie and say, yeah, it's live. And then an hour before, they call back and go, actually, it's going to be taped. And I go, nope, I'm only going to be on there live. You're not going to edit me. And they'll start being real arrogant. I go, listen, you're a pack of liars. I know you are. Go to hell. In fact, there's behind-the-scenes footage of me on CNN one time. The last time I was on, like five years ago or three years ago, with what we actually taped. Versus what went on air. Biggs, come back here real quick. He's in there, the control room ran off. Uh, you're coming on in about an hour uh, and 15 minutes with uh, Margaret. What are some of the topics you're going to be breaking down? Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some more in-depth stuff about the, uh, the media coming in and basically, you know, just being uh, told off by Trump. Some of our inputs on that as well. Uh, Ron Paul uh, calling out the fake media, giving his list. And, uh, you know, the Kanye West thing. I think the Kanye West story is kind of a big deal. As you think about it, he is one of the most followed people on Twitter. He's this darling child for the New World Order, and people use him as a tool to kind of brainwash these kids. 
And he kind of comes to this realization point where he goes, you know what, maybe he's not that bad. You know, if I would have voted, I would have voted for Trump. Let's give him a chance. And then within an hour, this guy all of a sudden has this nervous breakdown and, and, and the doctors put him in a psychiatric ward. I mean, I, I don't get that. Like, that's so weird because the last thing we need is someone with that many followers who could uh, really mold a lot of young minds. The last thing sure. we need is him talking about how he's pro-Trump. Sure, they're sending the message that you must be mentally ill if you finally go. It's a hoax, like Tim Allen said. He hasn't done anything. There's no source material. It's all made up. Thank you, Joe. We'll talk to you coming up at the bottom of the next hour. But the good news is Democratic Party going stink admits Democratic rep. Now, I'm going to go to some of your phone calls here in a moment. And we go to the bottom of the hour and when Owen Troyer joins us, we'll continue with your phone calls. I'm going to get to a huge fake news story that Michael Zimmerman heard them talking about on local radio this morning. He went and checked it and found out, as usual, it is a total and complete lie. So that's coming up at the bottom of the hour. I'm going to tell one of the writers, they should probably blurb this or write about it, because I, I told you we're going to set up a whole section on exposing fake news on Infowars.com, a new section, a new tab on the right-hand side that you can click on. It'll be a page of videos and articles, both video reports and article reports that break down fake news. And let me tell you, there's plenty of it. And guess who's actually doing it? MSM. And here's the example. The Daily Beast, that's Newsweek. Texas Republicans want to out LGBT kids in school. Now, you read the article. And you read the bill. It's two different things entirely. There is no mention of sexual per persuasion, of, of sex, of gay people, of anything in here. There is, there is zero, zero, zero information. Guys, I had the full bill. Yes, Zimmerman to print that for me again. Because I had it right here. And that was actually a WikiLeak I just picked up. I can't keep track of all this anymore. And it's incredible. You read the bill, and it has nothing to even do with that. I mean, the lying. But again, you've got to make your group persecuted. So you can then tell people who the bad guys are they're trying to get you. And what it actually says is that if your kid tells a teacher they're thinking about committing suicide or something, that the school's allowed to contact the parents. Well, of course they should be able to do that. But see, there's a lot of stuff going on in these schools where kids are being recruited into all sorts of weirdness, Satan worship, you name it. And they don't want those kids to be able to talk to their parents or they don't want the teachers to be able to talk to the parents. So they don't want the school, to, good people in the school to talk to parents about what's going on. There's a real agenda here. And if you read Salon, and other liberal publications, they say, oh, it's time to legalize pedophilia. You know, it's loving. NAMBLA is loving. And we should just you know, go along with all this. So th there's something very deep and very dark here about this fake, agenda, uh, fake news agenda because they don't want you having context of what's happened to your children. And they don't want you having contact with your children. They want to cut you off from your children because as Melissa Harris Perry said, your kids belong to the state, not you. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones. Your phone calls are straight ahead. Pete, Steve, Charles, Jesse, James. Everybody else out there, we're going to be taking your phone calls here in just a few minutes. 800-259-9231 is the toll-free number. The only thing. Coming up, I'm going to get into huge fake news put out by the Democrats as usual. I've got the bill here. It has nothing to do with gays or sex or anything. It allows teachers to talk to parents, which they should always do, but people are suing over that. They want to cut off communication. It says nothing about it. But look at the headline out of the Daily Beast. Texas Republican wants to out LGBT kids in school. No, the Democrats want to get sexually involved with kids that want to bring sexualization in and form sexual relationships and sexual cultures with kids. They have a name for it. Just read the WikiLeaks. James in Florida is up next, but first, Pete. Pete in California. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good morning, Commander. Hey, brother. Say uh, about Hillary. I, I guess this is more of a question than uh, 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 an opinion. But what uh, if if Hillary is put uh, if she's prevented from or if she's given a pardon by Obama, 
Is she prevented from testifying in another investigation? Because I, I, I mean, I think, I think this investigation should go down to the bottom um, and and go after all these people that have been involved with her uh, over the years. Well, I've, I mean, I've checked the law. I've checked what past presidents have done. It is believed that a president can do a 360 pardon, but that's only for ongoing investigations, not for ongoing criminality. And the foundation is an ongoing criminal enterprise. And so I believe that it can always be reopened because the Clinton crime machine is ongoing. And there's not, not even a presidential pardon uh, can pardon an ongoing criminal operation. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, I think uh, I think this really needs to be exposed and exposed well to the American people, uh, so they see everything that's happening. Because uh, now, with the the mainstream media and so forth, everyone's trying to cover it up. I think it really needs to come out into the open. I heartily agree with you. Um, the issue here is Trump isn't involved in this now because it's not his job. He's called for it. He's trying to put an attorney general in who you can bet your bottom dollar is going to go after Hillary. So if Conway is going around on TV saying, oh, he wants to leave Hillary alone, she's been through enough, let's move forward, let's bring the country together, that is political to try to heal the country, okay? And that is the position of someone that's trying to be a peacemaker, a classic female trait, okay, fine. The issue here is justice must be done. Uh, and so if he puts an attorney general in that sits on top of FBI investigations or things like that, then I'm going to get mooey pissed, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen with Senator Sessions. Great points, Pete. Thank you. James in Florida, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. How you doing? Good, my friend. Good. I just wanted to say uh, I was upset when I first heard the news, what Kellyanne Conway had said. But after thinking about it for a while, it makes a lot of sense that he uh, is hopefully just kind of playing possum, playing politics, trying to avoid the pardon. And then, you know, we'll see what happens when he gets into office. And really, like you said, it's not his duty to go after her personally. So it's probably a pretty smart political move. Well, I mean, if he exactly, if he goes after him himself, that will get her off because he's not supposed to do that. Look, the signal of Jeff Sessions, you couldn't have put somebody better, okay, who, who, who's proven they'll go after people. So it's on. It's on. And I'm not putting Conway down. From her perspective, it's true. That is not Trump's job now. It's, justice is separate through the AG, who will be appointed by the president but confirmed by Congress, or nominated by the president, confirmed by Congress. And so he wants to get Sessions in, but watch, they're going to fight Sessions. Chuck Schumer is sworn to fight Sessions like it's the end of the world because they know it is high noon in Dodge City, baby, and there's a new sheriff in town with Jeff Sessions. Absolutely, and I just got one other point. You know, all of us that we were called deplorables, um, you know, it's really bothering me that uh, they keep the mainstream media keeps trying to frame us as so-called white nationalists and all right. And they have pictures of Nazis, you know, saluting or whatnot. And, um, you know, most of us are not Nazis, I'd say. So I think we need to reject that. We need to correct it. We can't go by the terms that they put on top of us because otherwise we lose, I think. Well, plus they're discredited. Uh, and so when someone calls you a name, you're not. And usually they're the ones pushing race themselves, not because they even believe in it, because it's a control system. They're race pimps. They're not even really racist. They're just using race and racism to control. I mean, look at Jared Kushner. I mean, the guy is one of the most prominent Jewish families in America, billionaires, uh, you know, in, in, in the free market and in real estate. And he's one of Trump's favorite people, one of his top advisors. I mean, you got, okay, so this guy's anti-Semitic, but he's married into Jews and his top advisor is Jewish. I mean, this, none of this floats. It's all BS. Hey, I tell you, man, you can see that good always takes the day as long as it takes action. And it always comes from behind. It's biblical. It's historical. It's a cycle. There's still a lot of bad stuff happening. We're a long way from being out of the woods. But I got to tell you, big, huge victories uh, are taking place right now. Yeah, it's great. And the biggest victory is the freak out of the mainstream media and the liberals. And we're seeing it everywhere. They want to call us fake news. And the one thing that I heard from... Trump, and he was scathing the people at this meeting yesterday, apparently. He says, you're the enemy. You're a bunch of scum. Exactly. You know what? And you know what that was? I was thinking about this, Alex. Donald Trump, bless his heart, did what everybody listening to this broadcast wishes that they could have done for the last 10, 20 years.
get all of the mainstream media in the same room and then tear them a new you know what. I mean, I, I'm jealous that Donald Trump got this opportunity. I'm actually envious. Right? I mean, he got to sit on the I'm already envious of his wife. He basically said, eh, eh. I mean, here was my favorite one. I can just imagine he's talking to these reporters and he's like, yeah, you know, I was listening and they got it wrong. You got it wrong. The election coverage, you got it wrong. And apparently he. No, uh, we have the quotes. It's, I hate you. You're a bunch <laughs> of liars. CNN, you're the worst. What a bunch of, I mean, he tore the daylights out. He refers to a horrible network correspondent who cried when Hillary lost and hosted a debate. Uh, clearly. He said, I hate your network. Everyone at CNN is a liar. You should be ashamed. <laughs> Don't you wish you had the opportunity to say that right to them? Well, he knows they have no audience. The small audience they have are like the mental patients. I remember when I got in uh, when I got in back of a CNN broadcast and I called out Don Lemon. I said, Don, you're reading off a teleprompter. Don's reading off a teleprompter. And Jake Tapper was sitting off to the side shooting me this dirty look like, how dare you? How dare you disrupt our broadcast? I'm Jake Tapper. And I've Jake Tapper, we have racial attacks against minorities by wh white Trump supporters. We don't have any proof. And the congressman goes, well, here's all the videos of whites being attacked. He goes, why are you bringing up race? And then the congressman laughs. He goes, this is what you brought up. What the hell? I mean, it's like upside down land, man. Well, and then, of course, you've got the people who will say, oh, don't talk to me about white people dealing with anything as you provide massive videos of people being attacked because they're white. But actually, for the uh, nightly news, I'm going to take a segment from Don Lemon last night. And uh, we're going to break it down. He, he tries to foment a race war. He tries to say that anybody with the alt-right is a racist and a Nazi. And again, with no proof, he just says it matters. It's fact. total fake news pushing for sedition in the country. But what's great is, we pointed it out, Paul Watson pointed it out, the fake media is the corporate media caught lying about Iraq, the wars, about Trump, about the economy, about the open borders. They're the fake news media. And so now the name they gave us is now their official name. The MSM is the fake media, the dying media, the dinosaur fake media. In fact, their full title, you know, like a, it's kind of an imperial title, is the uh, collaborator, disgusting, prostitute, discredited, traitor, collapsing, dinosaur, fake. Propaganda. Propaganda, fake corporate on. fraudsters. Yeah. And so they, but it's. So the name be longer. Like you could go on all day. Like a Roman Rock, emperor. Yeah, I mean, it's an Alinsky tactic, though, right? To get out in front of your opponent. So they call us fake news. Oh, oh, they knew the pedophile stuff was coming out on the uh, on the Clintons. So they just had these fake lawsuits, and then it turned out fake women every time. It wasn't even real. Oh, just oh, totally they, fake. And they're all dropped. Oh, and he wants to get the Jews. That's why his chief advisor is a Jew. <laughs> Plus, wants to get the Jews. And oh, women. and his son-in-law. He hates women. That's why he's married multiple women. And Kellyanne Conway successfully uh, managed his campaign. To First ever. Yeah, he hates women, though. Has his daughter. What do you make of the point that uh, Tim Allen made? That Look, you bullies are bullying everyone about Trump, but I go to the source material. There's nothing there he really said. You just lied. Well, it won't matter. I mean, this is the same This is the same hypocrisies that we've been calling out. You've been calling out for years. And then you've had uh, this story that came out today from the Daily Mail. These uh, Hamilton actors and actresses that lectured Mike Pence, essentially. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing. They, you know, they weren't that demanding. Yeah, and, and, and Pence, la I mean, you're paying, you're paying 50 bucks or to go, more. To, yeah, to go hear them. Yeah. And then it's a mainly black cast. You're going to see a black cast, support them. Then they bitch at you and call you a racist. Pence takes the high road and says, oh, I, it's, I'm fine with it. No big deal. Turns out most of them didn't even vote. Exactly. They talk about it. I mean, if you're not going to vote, don't bitch about the results of the election. You didn't vote. You had Well, it shows it's all about, vote. it's just like they, people virtue signal. They're six times less likely to give to charity in studies. And I, I, They tell you all day how you should give money. And you know that these protesters, I mean, if we could get a percentage of how many of them voted, you know that it wouldn't be probably even 90. It'd probably be under 80, 70. I mean, who knows how many of these people even voted. They don't, they're not even from the city. Well, it's like, what was it, 35% of people arrested 70-something in, uh, in uh, Seattle and Portland and other areas. They hadn't even voted. Well, Alex, I've got a stack of news. You've got, but they were paid. They were paid. They how, do you, were paid. how do you decide? They were paid. They, they were paid to be there. Well, yeah, there's George Soros paid protesters who also has given uh, eleven thousand dollars. Have you seen the video that's comment. resurfaced? I couldn't find it for years where he admits he was a Nazi collaborator, and they say, "Do you feel bad?" He smiles and gets happy and says, "No, <clears throat> I pick the winning side." What the? F he said it was the. This is the guy lecturing life. us that we're anti-Semitic. He said it was the brightest time of his life. Is what he said. <laughs> so he gets an ADL award. Yeah, and then he's... Uh, I mean, is the ADL not a frickin' joke? 
bankster, hedge fund manager. He's got all this influence. At one point in time, it was said he had more influence than the United States government. So who knows? You know what's weird? He looks like Emperor Palpatine. But him and Hillary Clinton both look like Emperor Palpatine. The bags under the eyes, the domineering death stare. He is Emperor Palpatine. He does get these, ah, with my training, you will come to the dark side. Feel the power of hate. That's kind of fun to do that, isn't it? <laughs> you would do it. Mm, but bankrupt the economy, you flood the nation with Islamicists. What do you think about this for fake news, Alex? Remember, it wasn't even an hour after Trump won, and they were announcing that stocks were crashing. The well, they tried to crash them. Yeah, but here and we go. And so within five hours, it reversed. Biggest stock market in history. CNBC stocks mostly higher, hitting all-time highs. Telecoms rise 2%. So there you go. Just like after Brexit, the economy actually takes off. What do you know? You get a corrupt government off of your back. You know, Alex. We've had a totally managed economy. He's signaling laissez-faire wildcatting. I was talking to uh, the people in accounting the other day, and she was she you know she was saying how she gives them a she gives the people on the phone a hard time because of how much money they take out of our taxes. I'm like even even in our accounting department, folks, we're fighting the info war. Even the people in our accounting department are fighting the good fight. Sick of the federal government taking thousands and thousands of dollars out of our paychecks every time around. I mean, it's it's and that's the thing about these protests and the big bankers that want bigger government have written the laws where they're tax exempt. It's like, oh, you only got $50 million, bro. Meanwhile, if I hire people, I'm paying 40% federal tax. I was thinking about this, Alex. So we had four police officers shot on Sunday, two fatally, right? And nobody even knows their names because um, the media didn't humanize them. Except Donald Trump, who actually called the family of the slain San Antonio police officer. Nothing from Obama. Trump did call. But here's what I was thinking, Alex. So... We had Black Lives Matter protests in the streets after Mike Brown was shot. Um, you know, we've we've had these protests now going on for two years, right? Okay, so I'm thinking, what what is the opposite side of this spectrum? What if there was a Blue Lives Matter protest or a Cops Lives Matter protest and all the police officers decided to protest? You know what would happen? Society would actually have to change. You know why? Because police officers contribute to society, okay? So all of these protesters can protest all day long. And nothing is going to happen. Society doesn't have to take notice because they don't contribute to society in mass. If police officers protested, if police officers went on strike, that would influence society because they contribute to society. And let's be specific because this always turns into a you know, zero-sum game where we got to pick sides. There are problems with police. There's corruption everywhere. But they're the lowest level of government. We're supposed to change the top to change the problems there, not let George Soros, some bastard collaborator globalists come in and foment a civil war directing all our anger with the government onto them it's a total scapegoat and an admitted psyop and only an idiot would be part of it and just like you've been saying police officers are starting to wake up quicker than most people oh i used to be a bigger critic until i until i saw that they were the ones actually listening it's the weirdest thing and don't you so i'm like okay well you're awake what's going on good and don't you want the police officers to be on your side if if you know what hits the fan i mean don't we want good police officers who want to continue to be brave continue to maintain their oath to protect and serve? Absolutely. And, my, and listen, most cops, they, they're always, you know, posting letters to the editor from the police unions. They don't want to just write tickets all day. They want to go help people. Uh, and, and there are some cities that run it right and just run, write enough tickets to pay for the revenue and don't try to always expand or jack stuff up. Um, you know, Travis County Sheriff's Department's been that way. Now they've got a really bad La Reconquista, uh, as you know, as the head of it, who says she won't deport any illegals. Well, it's already got to the point where they can drunk drive and hurt whoever they want. And I'm not against people period but you can't just drunk drive and then be let go because you're an illegal because the sheriff isn't going to prosecute you but i want to go to some phone calls and go to some of this other news but uh so much happening here that needs to be mentioned have you because i've been asking callers to call in on this nobody has yet i don't want to name names because i haven't talked to some of the folks here in the office that told me about it i i didn't think to ask them yesterday and this morning two people right back there in that office had their parents tell them don't come to Thanksgiving if you're going to bring up politics. And so they're like, we're just not going to come. And it's another person's brother just basically makes fun of us, makes fun of him, doesn't want to associate with him because he's a mainline conservative, not one of those Trump guys. And it just shows how they buy into mainstream media and think they're cool because they're on the trendy side 
when all you are are people that have been totally conned. Why don't you want lower taxes? Why don't you not want war with Russia? Why don't you want us to not ship in jihadis? Why don't you want there to be a border? Obama has ordered the drones turned off on the southern border in the last 58 days. It's sabotaging our country. The country is seeing 300% the illegals flooding across, including many of them Muslims, jihadis, you name it. And they're saying imminent terror attacks, but the border's wide open. I mean, this is insane. This is out of control. So our virtual border that, that, that he says we have, so no wall is needed. And I agree, a real virtual border would be all we needed. That's been turned off. Nobody turns their border off. This shows this instinct to assault our country. And they shut down the S2 uh, area, which was a route that a lot of people were coming in. They've completely stood down on that route, one of the most trafficked, uh, trafficked routes. And they're saying, we don't, we don't even know who's giving these orders. We assume it comes from the White House, but we don't even know. But back to your Thanksgiving point, I remember uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas last year talking to my family. And there's, it's, it's, it's a mix, I would say, between conservatives and liberals. And, but pretty much everyone laughed at me at Thanksgiving. And, and there I was laughed at at Thanksgiving. And there were a couple that came over by Christmas. 30 people basically laughed at me. Just laughing. And, you know, you talk about this. Trump will never get the nomination. And how do we react? We just sit there and smile and laugh like, I know what you, you're wrong. I'm wrong. I know. I do this 18 hours a day yeah, and like, talk to know, all the top pollsters. You and, know more than me, though, because you saw a report on Fox. Or something laughed at Ann Coulter over a year ago. You know, the, who do you think out of 14 people running? It was Republicans. She goes, oh, Donald Trump. And everyone laughed. It's not possible. Oh, 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 oh. But, ho, but ho, ho, green giant. <laughs> I know that there may have been one or two of my family members in my extended family that voted for Clinton. Maybe. I'm not sure if they did. Or oh, not. listen, I had people over and I'd say, let me guess. You heard that on NPR. They go, yeah, how do you know? And I go, I've heard it word for word. I know the script. Let me guess. You watch MSNBC. Well, yeah. I mean, he's crazy. You'll never be. Oh, it's like this. It's like this ah, thing without any facts. Well, it's sad, though. He was already in the lead. He had the most money. He's not even close. The other guys were, were boobs. He was real. He was real. That's I am just won. so sick. I'm so sick of how I'm right like 98% of the time. And no matter how many times I'm right or how, or how I change the entire media paradigm or what I do, People that have done nothing never have any respect for me. Now, high-powered folks have massive respect. I'm not. It's crazy how winners know how to respect other people and listen. These people don't listen to anything. You mean you built a news empire by yourself? Well, I did it with the help of the listeners, and it is an empire now. It's small, but my God, 80-plus million viewers during Election Week. So Our new low is 40 million a week. It's, it's sad, though, to think that people will be separated from for Thanksgiving over politics. And of course, my family, they're, they're, they'll invite me. I'm not worried about that. I, it's sad to hear that there's others around here. But it kind of shows the hypocrisy again where... Well, it, it shows family doesn't mean anything to them. It shows the, the, the states they're gone. Saying. They're in a cult, folks. Only a cult tells you, you can't see your family now. That's what cults do. And isn't the left liberal? I mean, aren't they supposed to be open to other ideas? Aren't they supposed to be willing to have the... Edu or the conversation that takes you out of the comfort zone. I mean, that's what a liberal is. The fact that they want to totally shut you out, the fact that they basically they want to censor you from dinner. I mean, they want to censor their well, own. Look at all the comments on USA Today and stuff where they people are like, yeah, my dad's uninvited me, uh, you know, my dad, uh, because I, I, he saw my look. Facebook. He's like a, like a little Nazi police officer. I noticed you did not vote for Hillary. Well, you are not well. I mean, let me tell you, if my dad ever did that to me, it'd be 10 years till I talk to him again. And I don't mean that meanly. You, this, this, is, this is dishonorable. What in the hell? And here's the story. You know, notice WikiLeaks stopped releasing stuff. I wish they'd have just gone ahead. They were going to yeah. keep going if people voted wrong. But I mean. Well, Kim.com. What, what are you going to do, folks, when it comes out? They're deadling kids, huh? Kim.com said he thinks that there's going to be a big email drop or leak before uh, the inauguration. And usually he. I agree. No, I think he's, got the, he's got the ear. Please, Kim.com. He wanted to come home me one day. I was out doing something, and I guess he didn't want to come on with other hosts, but whatever. I want to get Kim.com back on. Great guy. Oh, yeah. He, they need to launch the thermal nuclear weapons. They need to release it. Just so they hit these people with, with their goddess, knee deep in pedophilia, you name it, reportedly. So yeah, they'll story, come out and defend it, though. There's a story on Washington Post. It's called uh, Two Americas, and it breaks down all of these cases of families that are, are basically being blacklisted from Thanksgiving or Christmas. Uh, grandmas and, and granddaughters not getting along with one another. It's all very sad. I mean, we could sit here and talk about it, but you know what it is. I think we should just, let's, let's hear from the callers, Alex. Absolutely. We're going to break in a minute and go to calls. And we've got Charles in New York, though, says coping with Hillary supporters. Because I've asked people to call in on that. 
Uh, so, so let's see if, he, if, if he's on that topic. Charles, welcome. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. Welcome. Go ahead. Okay. Um, in coping with uh, people that believe that Hillary Clinton should have been elected president, I, I find that the best way to answer is to say that she was the right sex. America is ready for a female president. It just happens that the, the Democrats chose the wrong candidate. And because um, Trump wasn't attractive as a, as a male uh, opponent, um, people have resented that very much. But I usually say, um, what a uh, candidate would you have preferred to have voted for if she was uh, a female? Let's say Meryl Streep against Hillary Clinton. Who would you vote for? Or in the case of a woman that would lie to the families of the, of the ambassadors and the victims of Benghazi when they came home, and, and, and she lied to them to their face. Uh, exactly. She stole the nomination. And by the way, that's in the WikiLeaks. I'm going to cover that when we come back. She stole the nomination from him. And so, again, it's all a fraud. We will not certify your fraud and at the cult of Hillary Clinton. Thank you, Charles. Great points. We'll be back. Stay with us. More calls straight ahead. Here we go. And sliding into home base. And sliding into home base. Ladies and gentlemen, I just got back. Safe. I was, I was back there talking to uh, Rob Dew and McGreen. And, and, and I kind of told the story as a gestalt, uh, as a composite, because there's other crew members as well that have had family say, maybe you shouldn't come to... Um, Thanksgiving or, you know, please don't bring up politics. And I was telling you some of the stories I personally have experienced. Well, this is unprecedented. And again, these are people defending Hillary Clinton. Imagine if they had a Democrat who wasn't a crook. Then you could maybe argue some of this, but it's just crazy how they doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on this lady. So coming up in the next segment, they're going to pop in in the control room uh, talking to us. Again, this is the Alex Jones Show. I'm Alex Jones, your host. We are listener supported. I want to thank you all for building InfoWars. We've got Black Friday specials running throughout this weekend uh, where we have upwards of 50% off on some of our best-selling products. Uh, and, of course, uh, we've got 30% off today on our flagship Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2, the good halogen. It's changed my life. But what's really changed my life is everybody supporting us and spreading the word. So it's a win-win, 360 win, InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com is the big main site. Uh, or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. It's $20.96 right now. You sign up for auto ship, you get an additional 10% off. I mean, there's a, there's too many specials to go over them all. Brain Force Plus, 20% more in the bottle and a strong, stronger formula. So it's like plus, plus, double plus good. To quote George Arwell. So InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free, 888-253-3139. Now let's take some more calls. Owen, you'll ride shotgun with me more into the next hour. We've got some video clips coming up as well. But before I go to Stephen Ohio and others, the tyrants have really gotten us conditioned, even though we're somewhat upset. I should be more upset about the border. Totally open, illegal shipped in, the smuggling process completed for a permanent underclass. People try to come here legally. They make it really hard to do, so you just do it illegal. And then now Obama orders the drones all turned off, which is a constitutional role. Instead, he has the drones on us. So you're saying that We've got a government right now that's deteriorating our border, which is essentially our country. You've been saying that for years. And then also on the heels of all these Thanksgiving stories, now the family is being torn apart, which you've also been saying for years. And that is fomented by the media. So I guess your fake news turns out to be real somehow, Alex. I don't know how that works out, but um, we're seeing it right now. You're not allowed to go to your Thanksgiving dinner if you're a Trump supporter in some of these families. And why is that? Because the media has conditioned people to believe that you are a racist, a neo-Nazi, a homophobe, you hate women, whatever it is, we know all the narratives, and now you're not allowed to go to your family's Thanksgiving dinner. I'm sorry for the families that are experiencing this. <clears throat> I'm glad that my family is not that way. Well, listen, if, you, if your family's gone bad and they're this type of trash, I would be proud to not go. Yeah, you just wouldn't want to go. That's why we got to continue via the libertarian constitutional Trump movement to have meetups and have groups and just form our own families of, of every color, race, and creed that are common sense. That's your family. Yeah. In fact, if, if you know anybody out there that's been shunned by their liberal family, invite them to your Thanksgiving. And you really need to do that anyway. Just get an emergency preparedness family that's in your area. I mean, go to your neighbor's house, say, hey, look, do we have ammunition? Do we have food? Do we have water? If something goes down and we can't communicate with people that are far away, I need to have people that are local here that I can communicate with and make sure that we've got a survival plan. 
So it's like a it's like a win win, Alex. That's it. We're going to break. Coming back with Steve and others. I haven't gotten to this yet. I promise it. Like eight after, I'll get to it. We caught him in some huge fake news. I mean, this is some of the biggest fake news ever. Third hour, 70 seconds away. Spread the word. They hate this broadcast. They hate it when you spread Thank the word. For We're kicking their butt in a war, but it's a war. Shin the videos Visit out. GCNR. Shin the articles out. Today. Keep the wave going. We're just starting to win. Rob Dew is at my house this weekend till like 10 or 11 every night with his four kids with a baby on his, <laughs> on his, on his leg while uh, his wife hung out with my family at an event uh, and the girls over there. And he was over there every night and we were like shooting hours of live videos. Yeah, you're, And I just you're, couldn't stop. You're a madman. No, no, it's not that. Like I was like, <laughs> it was like 11 o'clock and he goes, we should probably do another one. And like, and like he's got his baby girl. I tell you, the sweetest little girl, we had a fire, fire going outside and Speaking of, I met She walks over and she goes, fire! And he goes, we don't even have fires in our house. It was like epigenetic. She was just saying, fire! Maybe some of these liberals need to experience a fire, a bonfire, starting it with their own hands, lighting it, cooking something. You know they're trying to ban that. Well, yeah, it's killing it's killing us, you know. Rob Dew, uh, you're just popping in. So is McBreen. We're going to go to calls. Uh, I was talking about you and several other people in the, in, uh, in the office that aren't going to Thanksgiving because you've been admonished to keep your mouth shut, right? Well, that's that's partly true. Before the election happened, my wife and I decided we were going to take the family uh, out to a lake cabin just to be with the family because with the election going on, I've been gone a lot, um, haven't really seen the kids, haven't hung out with the kids. And we're just like, let's just make a long weekend out of it and get away from this. And we didn't even know who was going to win. We decided to do this at the end of September. But after the election, I was told by two family members that our house is a no politics zone. We're not talking politics. And so whatever. I don't care. Um, I, either way, if Hillary won, I would have been the same way. I, I would have been like, go, let's go after Hillary. And, and with Trump, let's see what, tr what Trump does. Right now, I'm pretty happy with what he's been doing. And uh, I agree with most America. That I think it's 96% said they're hopeful. I'm oh, hopeful. notice how fast it's flipping and all the polls on him. Yeah. As oh, the stock market's up. Oh, he's really doing what he said he did. He's going to kill the TPP. He's going to look all this stuff was illegal. Obama did outside of Congress. That's why Trump can turn it off. Because it wasn't even done properly. They're like, France is like, you just can't do that as president. Really? How'd Obama do it without Congress? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that one, how they just say, oh, it's, it's too late. We already signed it. We already decided. Well, no, we're deciding now. So your decision... Well, plus, legally, we, 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 we really can get out of it. It's, it was never ratified. That little piece of crap, Hawan, is going to... Anyways, dude, yeah, I mean, I was just talking your story and several others that don't want to come on air. This is personally happening to me where folks go, look, I'm not coming over because of Trump. No, I totally believe that. And I've seen it on social media and Facebook. People are, are having flip outs. And hey, you know what? To each his own, as far as I'm concerned. I, you know, it's like this Hamilton thing. People are getting so overblown about it. I personally think it's not that big a deal. And we admonish the SJWs for like crying about little things like this. And then we're crying about somebody being like talked to. And he wasn't even that rude. I don't think he was rude for what he said. At the at the event, and I think, hey, let's welcome dialogue like well, this. Well, notice so we they're can telling us when it's they're bullying wrong. if we argue or confront somebody. Oh, I know. But when they do it from the stage, when you've paid to see them, that's right. okay. But that's actually a <clears throat> that's actually a good point that you make, Rob, because people who are saying don't come to my dinner because of your politics, they're censoring their own life. I mean, that's the yeah. left censoring you. We need to talk more at so, this yeah, point. We, at least, we need yeah. to open dialogue. Exactly. They want to shut people. down dialogue. And and I, and I I truly believe that that is how things are going to change in this yeah. country. Because look. Hey, half the country didn't vote for Donald Trump, or those who voted, I guess I should say. So, by the way, Hillary stole five states. We need to hammer that. Drum. I, I agree. They and now they're saying, oh, she's up vote, by 1.7 million votes. And I'm like, hey, let's start looking at these votes. Let's check ballot images. Let's look at registered voters with total num number of votes cast. Look, Bev they Harris tried, said it's over they 100%. They tried to steal the place. election. They failed. They are super upset. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. We'll have McGreen pop in about right. his brother that makes big jokes about us. Yep. And, and, and thanks for all a big joke. And then we will look. At, but he's from a conservative event. He's one of these Ted Cruz type guys. You know, Fox News said Trump was a kook. So doesn't George he feel Bush was good. George W. Bush is my daddy. W. He was him, my daddy's daddy before he was he his a, daddy. He is a Texan. Tough Texan. He's from Australia. My platypus is from Texas. All right, I got a bunch of news I haven't gotten to yet. I want to. And obviously your phone calls. Steve in Ohio. Jesse in Texas, Eddie in Arizona, uh, Diane in Texas, Donna in New York. I'm going to get to all of you ahead of some of the other crew coming in today to host part of the next hour with me. 
Uh, but Rob does a piece of work. Who wants to talk bad about their parents? I, I love his parents. I know them both. Met his dad a lot more than his mom. And, 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 and so I was like, hey, you did say they were basically saying, watch your mouth or don't come. And he goes, all right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. You're right. But he goes, but I'm going to point something else, though, that you were wrong about. <laughs> I, I saw the first hour of last night's show. So what am I wrong about, dude? I don't know yet. All right. Yesterday, you said uh, BBC has a $1 billion budget. Here it is. It's actually $3.7 billion. You were wrong, Alex. Ah! BBC so gets a $3.7 billion dollar you went budget conservative again. a year. I was and, pointing out on Quantcast, we're way bigger than them. Oh, I know, I know. And, and by the way, they're, they're like only internet globally. No, once So it, we're no, bigger than the BBC, and, and our budget uh, is like $40 million or whatever Exactly, a year. yeah. No, More views I was on just YouTube pointing too. out that you, you, you always underestimate things when, you know, you're talking about the deaths and whatnot. But here it is. You were $2.7 billion. They have $2.7 billion more than you thought. Uh, off my the memory, I mean, my memory said something like $3 billion, and then I just automatically said, it's like a billion dollar, maybe three billion. I said, check it out. Yeah. No, I, and actually last night I was watching the first hour of the show, at which, by the way, the crew did an amazing job in that first hour uh, yesterday. And Because I don't really sit and watch the show like as a, as a spectator, as a person watching it, but it was really nice to see, you know, what these guys have did. And I, I'm like, oh, I'm going to fact check him on this. 3.7 billion. Wow. They have that much money and we're still beating them. That's, a, that's what's so amazing. Is that well, it's we're scary, though, to see the POTUS. A hundredth of that. The lame duck possum running around saying fake news must be shut down worldwide. Right. That's their answer. Oh, yeah. But they don't have the POTUS, and the POTUS just, the new POTUS, they, he just, you know, the great orange toad, just called them into his office and shoot them out and said, you're liars. You're a joke. Get out of my office. I hate you. And they are the most <laughs> butthurt people right now. There was pictures of them walking out. And like Wolf Blitzer is just looking like you know he'd just seen a ghost, and Lester Holt kind of had this crown on his face. Cheering Hillary, drinking champagne exactly. like a boob. Yeah, these guys are losers, and they needed <laughs> to be called out, and they totally deserve to be called out for the way they've been treating the American people for the last thirty years. Sure. Now, now again, a bunch of people don't want to come on air. Yeah. His family said, "Don't come," or you know, watch what you say. But I mean, f tell now, me what you really told me after the election. It came out, and it didn't. They, I have, I have yet to speak to a couple of my family members, but it, it was told to me. The houses will be at no politics zones, which I I think uh, Owen got it right, though. He said it's going to be no your politics zone. Yeah, it's a censor your politics zone. Censor yeah, you sit yeah, there and you right. take it, and they're going to sit there like Rachel Maddow and lecture you. And again, they're reaching out saying, by the way, don't come here and talk and say stuff. So it's like, okay, I'm not. Yeah, but we had already planned to go somewhere else, and I can't wait to go hang out with the family for a few days. We're going to leave the electronics at home. I don't know how that's going to work out uh, because my kids that love those freaking iPads and uh but let me tell you it Thanksgiving is a time to get together with your family and if for some reason your family doesn't want to get together with you then just make your circle a little smaller and uh you know don't feel bad about not going because to your, I'm going to tell you to hang there's out with something your wrong with yeah. people that uh, blood is thicker than politics if it you're I mean I let liberals around me that I've known forever because hey you know they're still people. I, I I can see their point of view, but they're the ones that are, I mean, that's all I hear about is they're the ones saying, we don't want to be with you as if it hurts you, as if they want to teach you something. And I'm kind of like, I didn't really want to hang out with you anyways. I'm never going to talk to you again. Bye-bye. I get into fights with my family member, my cousins, aunts and uncles. I mean, like cats and dogs will fight politics and religion. But at the end of the day, we're still family. We can still break bread together. You know, I still want to eat a meal with you. I don't hate you just because we have different politics. So this is sad to me, but this is the this is the conquering of the family that you've been talking about for so long, Alex. Oh yeah, they really teach you to fight with your family. All right, uh, thank you, Rob Du, Infowars Nightly News News Director. Thank you, my friend. All right, thank uh, you, Alex. And hey, I love my family, but uh, <laughs> if you're going to talk politics to me, I will respond. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, you'll do it to five million people, right? Uh, now, probably. Sure. How <laughs> dare you speak out with oh. the Donald Trump is a racist? All right, uh, let's bring Darren McBreen in here. Now McBreen has a very nice brother. But he also polices him on Facebook. And that's what people are saying in the USA Today. That, oh, my dad saw my Facebook post and now he won't talk to me. You know, I, I'm sorry. To, uh, uh, am I lose my daddy? Daddy loves Hillary. Uh, so, uh, McBreen, your brother likes to make jokes, doesn't he? Well, to be honest, Alex, I, I have two older brothers, but they don't acknowledge me on Facebook or on YouTube. If these guys made a, a, a five-minute video about how to change oil in a in a Ford pickup truck, I would watch it just to see how they're doing or whatever. But these guys, these guys do not, um, anything I, I do on Facebook, 
they they just don't acknowledge it. So, and I talked to my brother like a uh, about a month ago before the election, and this is the first time we actually talked about politics. He says, "Who are you going to vote for, little brother?" And I and I was just surprised that he didn't know because it's all over Facebook and YouTube. I'm pretty wide open as far as um, who I'm who I'm voting for, and I said Donald Trump. And he says, Donald Trump's a clown. And I said, all right, fair enough. Well, who are you going to vote for? And uh, he says, I'm not, I'm not voting for anybody. This is the first time he was not going to participate in the election, right? And, uh, and then I just started talking about how InfoWars has made an incredibly big impact on the Trump campaign as we have been to all these Trump rallies. And it was just amazing all the people that were there, it seemed like, and I think Joe Biggs has seen it, everybody that went to these Trump rallies. I know Owen Schroyer, he's seen it as well. Every fifth person had an InfoWars shirt on, right? Every tenth person, there was a group of ten people with InfoWars shirts on. And I told my brother, we're making a huge impact on this campaign. And he says, no offense, little brother, but I don't see how that's helping him too much. <laughs> Man, so I'll tell you. It's, it's like... It's so like my family, a lot, a large portion of my family, I think they picture us as fake news and they picture us like we are, you know, we're in our mother's basement doing internet blogs. Well, let's talk about this because there are certain people in life that think if they get the cool parking spot at the yacht club or, or, or they're invited to some cool organization, well, they're the head of the country club. The head of Bushwood, uh -huh. gambling's Daddy. illegal at Bushwood. They think just being part of that is why they've arrived. And that's, uh, Kurt Vonnegut called it Grand Falloons. These organizations and groups, they're just all about giving each other awards and all this crap. And I'm sure your brothers are nice guys, plus you're the little brother. And any salesman will tell you, family's the hardest group to sell. But they sit there and they get so incredibly arrogant. I've had family do this until they finally, you know, click and like all their neighbors or listeners are like, I'm sorry, you're right. And they just can't imagine that you've actually gone out and trailblazed something. And so they think Fox News or whatever, that's God. And Megyn Kelly, she's making jokes about Trump. So that must be, you know, the highest order of things. Well, let me give people the news flash. We're looking at our numbers right now. We were as big as Fox News election week. Now, their numbers have gone down some, too. But, but, but our new plateau is 40 million views a week on the web, not counting threshold radio. We're talking 45 million, 50 million people conservatively now. I mean, conservatively. Now, they go, oh, but your views don't count. When it's our views, it's big and splendid and huge. It's this delusion of people that still think, like, ooh, I saw a clip of you on CNN. I'm like, whoop-de-doo, their average show's got 200,000 viewers. I mean, I could fart in the wind and have that many viewers on a video at home. And again, I'm not bragging about me. I don't sit here and say how big we are. <laughs> Drudge is like five times bigger on overall views than Fox News. You never hear that. The media's like, Drudge is over. Drudge is, it's the same deal. They just keep making these delusional announcements, but it's not the case. But notice, you should call your brother, invite him on the show and say, hey, big brother, uh, did you notice that InfoWars, you know, helped Trump win and Trump has said that? How do you feel now? Is there any way if InfoWars had 7 billion viewers a day, would it be important? Or is it just what you decide is important? And I found this. These people are delusional. I wouldn't say we were basically number one if we weren't. But the thing is, it's the people that aren't number one that think they're number one because they're associated with something they say is number one. It's like Hillary supporters. It's like make-believe. It's like little girls dressing up and pretending they're princesses or something. And, and, and now the reality hit them that all their delusion wasn't right, that they were on the wrong side of history, Darren. Well, look, I've said from the very beginning that this this entire election has been Hillary Clinton and the mainstream establishment media versus Donald Trump and social media and Donald Trump and independent media. And now we've won. So I think my brothers and I, and I love my brothers. They're, they're great Christian guys, great families. Uh, they're Air Force veterans. These guys are driving they 20 miles at 3 o'clock in the morning to, if your truck breaks down, you know. Sure. But they have this misconception that we are the crazy conspiracy theorists. And, and But look at us now. I mean, look at the, the head of Breitbart is now going to be the chief White House strategist. So the tide is turning, my friends, and the, the, we are the mainstream now. And independent media is truly taking over, and it's about time. And I'm very excited to see it happen. Sure, and we're not bashing your brothers. It's just that there's this arrogance. There are other folks in the office that don't want to talk who've had family say, hey, don't come here if you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's just like rejecting your family. Like, Hillary's my God. Don't come here. 
if you're not going to submit and let us lecture you. That's right. Uh, and but I, you know, I also want to point out that meanwhile, I have lots of other family members who think what we're doing is fantastic, you know. But these guys, it's just it seems like it's the closest family members, doesn't it? And, and, and these guys just they won't watch anything I do. I never hear. It'd be nice to talk to them and say, hey, you know, I, that video you did on it doesn't matter what topic that good job. We might not agree with you, but good job. But well, these my guys dad, just pretend my dad's like a smart guy. My dad's a smart guy. And I learned a lot of the stuff about the New World Order from him. He had bookshelves, you know, full of Carol Quigley's books and Brzezinski's books when I was a little kid. So I read those when I was like 10, 11, 12, 13 years old because that's what daddy had on his bookshelf and I was into reading. But still, it, was, it wasn't until about a year and a half ago, my dad, he, he knows I'm telling the truth about this, but sometimes he thinks I go too far. He went, because he knows a lot of folks, to like this dinner, a private dinner at a house, big mansion, and there were current and former generals there. And he'd been invited by one of his friends to it. It was a big defense contractor. And my dad goes, well, these were top generals. They were saying, you're dead on, and you're the leader, and you're the best, and your son is the one that understands the whole paradigm. Your son's the spirit driving the resistance. And my dad was like, no, I guess I'll listen to you. And it was weird to have my dad looking up to me for the first time. I didn't like it. So I think it's your big brothers. It's kind of like this thing, they can't respect you because you're the little brother. But try having your dad go from, yeah, yeah, you're right about a lot of this. I taught you a lot of this to like, whoa, like looking at you in awe. It's really weird. It's quite frankly not pleasing. Well, I can imagine. And But it took all these generals, like top generals. Like, my, then my dad was like, ooh. Anyways. And that, but for the rest of the public, you would think that they would see that your reports and the thing you've been saying continue to come true. You know, it's just time and time again. So when I just don't know why it's generals and military people that click with me because I've not been in the military. They just click, though. That's weird. I mean, it's I think it's because they see it from within, Alex. They actually see what you're talking about from within the government. And just like most of the people that listen to you and the things you say resonate with them is because they've been thinking this thing in their in their mind or they've been feeling this way in their soul, but they've never had And then I just say what they already knew. You just say it. You just put it out there, you connect the dots, and then it just clicks in people's heads. So you're, you know, you're like this, I don't even know, it's like you're some sort of a magical mystery being that takes what everybody's been thinking and saying for so long, and then you actually present it to people, and then they scratch their heads and say, that's exactly what I've been thinking. Look, Wait, there, I can say a, that? There's a large portion of the of American public that they get their news from The View. <laughs> you know, can I you mean, imagine? I mean, so, or or they get from Jon Stewart or, or, or late night television. Yeah. And I've always said there's John a lot Oliver. of people that they form a strong political opinion without even watching the news or reading newspapers. Well, exactly. They get I don't it from go to stuff television. that reaffirms my view. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really trying. I mean, if Trump goes sideways, I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, we'll my integrity is all to the I've fire. got, but he's not going sideways so far, and which even freaks me out more. It's like, my God, he's starting to deliver. What the hell? We're so used to losing. Are we ready to win? Well, I was talking with Darren McBreen uh, earlier today, and Darren was actually, he was he was piping hot walking around <laughs> the office back there. He had the story. He's like, Trump's not going to prosecute Hillary. What the hell's going on? He said he'd prosecute. He said he'd lock it up. He said there'd be an investigation. So was Margaret. And so then and so then we started talking. I said, well, you know, I agree. I even shot a report this morning. I said the same thing. I shot a report saying I wish Trump wouldn't have settled. But, you know, maybe, hey, maybe this is a good this is a chess move from Trump. I, I hate to be shark like, but he cannot be connected to it when they go after him. That'll derail it. So but that's what I'm saying. So that's so. So me we're not Machiavelli, talking. but Trump, when he needs to be, is just pull it. Look, Jeff Sessions is all you need to know. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm very confident that Sessions will at least go after it. And maybe this could be a slide of hand by Trump to uh, to act like he's easing off. That way, maybe Obama will say no need to pardon Hillary because it looks like Trump's not going to prosecute And it would be her. so perfect if, because, I mean, Obama knows what's going on. He's in this as well. How, imagine this. Imagine Barack Obama punishes Hillary Clinton without actually an indictment, without an investigation, just pardons her without anything looming. And everybody, what, why is he pardoning her? Because he knows sure, she's sure. a criminal. Pardon me. Well, I think Trump should press and then and then and then have them pardon because there still be crimes they can go after. But I think he's taking the right course. Um, I mean, I, I wonder if the Democrats are dumb enough. They are pretty delusional. They might actually buy the fact that he's easing off so that he can get into office. I mean, I know they're all watching right now, but they're so, I don't think they get it. I mean, look, doesn't it tell you, media, he called you in and said you're his enemy and he hates you. <laughs> so that ought to tell you something. Um, I mean, bring great points. Anything else?
Well, I just look forward to the day, and I, I could see this in the near future. This is a very good possibility when Leanne McAdoo steps up to a White House press conference and says, President Trump, I have a question, InfoWars, you know, she could say, InfoWars, Leanne McAdoo, and I have a question. So I think that's where we're heading. I mean, like we said, Breitbart, the head of Breitbart is now the chief White House strategist. Sure, sure. So well, let's expand on that, though. And I agree with you. Trump's going to go the route of doing big press conferences sometimes when he wants to, mm -hmm. but he's going to do daily videos where he talks directly to the people. He's bypassing the mainstream media, so that whole model uh, of, the, of the press briefing itself won't be there. But when he does do press conferences, if we have reporters on hand, they bring us in front and center Absolutely. to those press conferences. Absolutely. And the difference is, oh, there's 500 press, bring them in randomly to the microphone. That's what Trump's going to do. Alex, I would be at a Donald Trump protest surrounded by 500 Trump protesters and commies threatening to beat me up, and Secret Service would come up behind me and just in my ear say, hey, we got your back. Just, you know, hey, you're all right. We got your back. We love what you're doing. So that's what's up, folks. Yeah, and again, people say, well, let's just have a war with the government. They're evil. The average person in the government is just like us. They're not evil. It's the globalist people. They want us to have some damn civil war. Like I hear Jones is a traitor. He doesn't want a war with the government. It's our government. We're taking it back over. Peacefully, politically, with Donald Trump. That's what we hope. That's what we believe. This is our peaceful revolution. We don't need sticks and stones in the streets. We don't need to burn things down. And We're promoting riots. free market, what makes wealth and prosperity. The problem is we can't give our kids everything and I, because they turn to spoil brats. The only byproduct problem is the decadence. The problem is it works too well. And that's, I mean, that's what you're seeing with these protesters. They're, most of them are probably spoiled brats, and they have to get babysit by the police officers that are riding around on their bikes as they're protesting the cities. And then they say, oh, but these are peaceful protests. Well, we've seen what happens. That's why police officers are surrounding these protesters. So I don't know, but this is what happens when you get the liberalization of college. Oh, I love these, these, these groups are screaming, kill cops and throwing bottles at them. And the media's like, look at the cops being mean to the little protests. Oh, yeah. And they won't even show is what they're doing. I'm all for protesting. We've been in these rallies. These little bastards punch us and throw stuff at us. They've been arrested. They're finally getting arrested now. This should have been going on a long time ago. Oh, and then I had a story I saw either today or last night. They're saying that. Uh, you're committing a hate crime if you're bullying a Trump protester, is what they're saying now. It's a hate crime to bully a Trump protester. Meanwhile, there's actual hate crimes going down against Trump supporters, okay? So it's another Alinsky technique. Take the reality, invert it, and get out ahead of your enemy and claim that they are the ones guilty of your actions. It's really not... I gotta say this, though. I've seen the videos Millie Weaver shot as they threatened to beat her up last weekend. And the, I don't care if they were black, white, or Hispanic. But the white people especially look like goblins. They look like little weird demon ghouls and would threaten to attack her. And I was like wanting to attack them. That's why I realized I can't go out in public with these people anymore. I mean, what do you do when these snarling commies are, I'm going to kill you, you filthy <laughs> bitch. And they're like threatening to attack a woman. Doesn't that make you feel angry? I, I try to just take a deep breath and just try to calm myself, take the blood pressure down. But here's the thing. It's like, why? I, I've met Millie Weaver. She's a really nice girl. Sweet girl. Yeah, like, she's not. Why would you hate her? I mean, okay, you don't agree with whatever her politics are, or you don't like the things she's reporting on. But again, why do you get so mad? It's, Alex, I think. She's like, politely, like, what are your views? Yeah. Shut up, InfoWars, bitch. <laughs> we're going to beat, beat your ass. Yeah. Two guys bowing up on a woman. Donald and, Trump. And just the male in me I'm just wants to go. Rrr, rrr. It's like, you know, it's just. And then they want a fight. They're the ones that want the fight, Alex. They will get crushed in a fight. That woman calling for violence. Do you realize if there was actually a civil war? That woman war? looked like a... Exactly. It's always like some, I'm sorry, some 300-pound wimp who wants, who's never been in a fight wants to fight us. I don't want to start a civil war with these people. I don't want to start a civil war with these people. But if they want to start a civil war with us, they, okay, you're gone. Bye. That's the end of you. History, your history. See ya. But well, we, we would, we would, we would roll over these people like hot knife through butter. We want to. It would actually be very sad. But we would rather empower them. But th the problem is they don't want to be empowered. Okay. They want to wear black outfits and have Satan tattoos. Because you know what their empowerment is, Alex? You're a racist. That's their empowerment, is calling you a racist. They're better than you. So I called you a racist. I'm better than you. I'm That's right. Let's go to a call here. Big brain, great point. Steve in Ohio, I'm sorry I've had you hold so long. You're on the air, Steve. Welcome. How you doing? Um, I'm actually from uh, Peavey, Missouri, but I'm in a truck sitting out here in Ohio waiting to get loaded. But as far as the stuff with these 
crazy people out here that, that are, are lost. They're ignorant. They just don't know what's going on. What happens when you get screwed over and you find out that you've been screwed over? You know, you get mad. These people out here that are, that are uh, uh, you know, protesting for Hillary and this, that, and the other, they're, they're ignorant. They don't know what they're doing. Now, these ones that are being bust in, that's a totally different story. They need to be locked up. As far as Hillary goes, a serious message needs to be sent on him, but on her, but not just her, her handlers needs to go down and her handlers, handlers need to go down. I agree. They're the real terrorist. Yeah. Trump can't you leave know? that, this terrorist network in place. He's got to get the ball rolling. Yeah. So for you is the litmus test tax cuts, controlling the border or prosecuting Hillary? Well, uh, all of it. I mean, we've got to get our nation back. Excuse me. I'm a veteran. Okay, in my day, you know, I mean, it, it, when Nixon started, you know, Steve, stay there. You're a powerful so caller. Stay there. I'm going to come right back to you. Three minutes when you're getting your load, your 18 wheeler, but we're going to come right back to you. And I promise, bang through Jesse, Diane, Eddie, and Donna. And then we've got other guests coming in. Owen Troyer will be on the Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Thank you. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones. America has providence. America is magic. You have to take it in your hands. The destiny. All these fools that thought they would dominate the spirit of this republic are now entering the vortex. But now, we have to deliver. We have to stand up and be strong. We have to be good. We have to work with everybody. We have to be inclusive. We have to prove we're not what these enemies have said we are, the great dividers. They are the dividers. We have to come together. Mm -hmm. And Trump is delivering on many fronts. The economy's already back. He's already killing TPP. He's already announcing the end of carbon taxes. The media says, well, that's a dictator. How did he could do that? Obama did it outside of law. So now the president can kill it because it was done by the president. As Ron Paul always said, if he was president, he couldn't just take over and fix everything. He's not a dictator. But so much stuff has been done dictatorially that you can turn it off. All it takes is the bully pulpit. Now, I want to go to Steve and others that are holding. They have both the reporters pop in. You guys jump in, Margaret Howell. And, of course, um, we got Joe Biggs here with us. Anytime they want to pop in, they got a bunch of news to cover. I'll host a little bit into the next hour uh, with these guys. And, David, not that I'm going to punch out here. We've already covered a ton of the news, but it's a very exciting time to be alive uh, Democratic Party going extinct, admit uh, Democrats' top rep. 96% national polls, hopeful, uh, showed tremendous confidence in President Trump because the world didn't end when he got in. Uh, day one, presidency withdrawal from the TPP. Uh, day one, the presidency withdrawal from the carbon taxes that have roughly doubled our power prices. Some areas tripled, like California. Uh, this is a big deal. This is, this is hey, China, you got 20-something <laughs> apple plants. Can we have one? And so they're just desperate to not let it, the new thing is, Ford was saying they were going to move to Mexico. They'd already made the announcement. Trump made threats, said, I'm going to put a tariff on you. That's not fair. The head of Ford, Mr. Ford, said, we're going to stay then. That was a, the media spun it then three days after and said, they weren't 100% going there. Mm -hmm. The point is, is we're putting the announcement out, stay here, we'll have incentives. Mm -hmm. So just watching the media, always cheering against America, Always bad-mouthing bitter clangers, always out to get us. I want to go back to Steve, what he wants to see in others, but, but just briefly, both of you, why do you think the MSM hates America so bad? I mean, I'm not putting words in your mouth. I think that's clear. Disagree if you do. And what do you make of them only intensifying their lying and their race-baiting when that's what got them to this point? Why do I think they hate us? Well, you know, I, I don't know if, if it's just stupidity or if, you know, they believe this elitist garbage that uh, they're basically a talking points memo for a liberal defunct government. That's so it's coming out of George yeah. Soros. He hates us. That's why the media hates us. Right. They don't they don't they're, they're not aware that they hate us. I don't think that I don't I don't think they are. They're just delusional elitist. That's that's I just know what they're creating out there. I'm telling you this weekend I went out with a whole bunch of my buddies who were uh, one guy from California, one of the other uh, buddies of mine from Florida. I had a guy pull a gun on me. I went out wearing a T-shirt that says Trump build the wall. It looks like the uh, the Vans logo. Mm -hmm. And I had a guy look at me, deadlock, big old dude, looks at me, rips his shirt off, and is like, I'm going to beat your effing butt. And I'm sitting there like, okay, <laughs> over a mm -hmm. T-shirt? You're this frustrated. Dude, you're I, this look, look, look. I'm not mad at you because I didn't catch it on tape, but you're so shocked when it happens. I get why you don't. When you go in these places, have it rolling. It's gold, dude. I had this guy come out, have, show me the gun, and I'm in my car, and I'm just like, and he walks around the corner with his wife. It's like another guy comes up and goes, F you. 
Well, I'm at saying, the same restaurant. F you, Alex Jones. I'm, I'm on Rainy Street, and this guy is so bad that it takes four of his little girlfriends to come pull him away and like, don't do it, don't do it. So he was just it. acting tough for them? Well, I, I've got a buddy that I call Big John for a reason. He's about six foot eight, and he's about 350 it. pounds. One of your combat buddies. Yeah, he's a big, giant guy. He went to the Citadel. And then I had my buddy Jordan and a couple other so guys. So it wouldn't have gone but, well. It wouldn't have gone well for him. But the funny thing is, though, is he was so just mad. I said, dude, it's okay. We can go to Home Depot. Let's go mix some mortar. Let's start building the wall, man. Let's make our border stronger. Oh, you're a racist. I'm going to kill you. Is he a white guy? No. <laughs> so mainly white people that come out. So, so he gets pulled away by four white girls. And as this happens, all the security guys are making phone calls. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, I know you're not calling the cops on me. So we leave this bar and start walking down the road. And everyone's like, nope, you're not allowed to come in. You're not allowed to come in. You're not allowed to come in. And I go, why? Like, That's it. I'm putting a Trump shirt on. I'm going down there. You got to. Rainy Street is gold. It well, is. then what the hell? Get the camera right now. Hey, it, that right it's now there's no one there. You got I mean, to go I'm in when that's going on at night. Oh. I'll, I'll pay for the drinks. Okay. You got to get down there. <laughs> okay. I just need some security. <laughs> no, no. This happened to me. Dude, so how bad is it? Let's, let's no, look, look at 20 million. Look, so, so there's a there's a bar called Bungalow. I go every weekend and just wear a shirt and go out there and see what happens. I've gone by myself and I've gone with other people. Uh, there's a bar called Bungalow, and I yeah, it's too it. bad. It's a nice area. I feel. I used to have a I've, girlfriend live over there. This really. situation, where I'm I used to have a girlfriend in one of those houses. It's a bar now. Yeah. So you go in the bar where it used to be a bedroom. I'm like, why well, used to be a bedroom in here and, and a bar? <laughs> it's a bar now. It's like they turn the houses into bars. <laughs> no. So I'm sitting here at this place called Bungalow, and one of the guys that's there that I just ran into as a fan. He's wearing that red shirt. Trump is my president, and he's like, "Do you mind if I hang out with you?" I was like, "I don't care." So we go into this bar called Bungalow, and I'm like, "Can I get a drink?" And the guy who's the manager, he looks at the bartenders and starts whispering. And I go, is there a problem? Uh, is there a reason that I can't get service? Well, I'm not really uh, comfortable with your friend here wearing that T-shirt in our establishment. I was like, you're literally, you're denying me service because he's wearing a T-shirt that says Trump is my president. So then I start rolling. And I film this guy, and they come over in their security. Oh, good. Have you put this up yet? Um, I, I just put it up on the thing. I didn't know if I could put that up with the drinking and people screaming. I don't care. Them. Put it up immediately. Okay. So we've got this. And the guy kicks us out. So I put up a video immediately after. I think I kicked out in D.C. and they Yes, and that place, got the guy got fired and all that. So I put up a, a, a response afterwards. I was like, look, Bungalow, they will kick you out if you're a Trump supporter. Do not go here. So then they started getting flooded with calls. And when I went back there this weekend to go look at Bungalow, it's Saturday night, jam-packed time. It was the only bar that was dead. It went from a five-star review down to a two, and nobody would even go. It was just security sitting outside in the cold, freezing their butt off. And I walked by going, <laughs> No, I agree. That's it. I'm putting on Trump's my president. I'm going down there. The shirt, by the way, is about to sell out. It's limited edition. Infowarsstore.com. We need your support. But it's at nine ninety five. dollars That shipping included. That is at cost. We went to Hotel Van Zandt, mm. and my buddy was wearing that shirt. And the lady was so, like, we gave her $100. Dude, bill. I wasn't wearing a Trump shirt. And this guy literally jumps out of a chair. But he goes, watch out, Mad Dog. The guy runs up to my vehicle and Here starts showing me his gun. I mean, right. meanwhile, he didn't know. We had guys right next to his other car that were already getting ready. So the lady at Hotel Van Zandt, we give her $100 mm -hmm. to pay for our drinks. She's so triggered by this T-shirt that Look she runs shirt. off with our $100 bill and does not go come back. She goes on break and leaves. We have to ask management, another bartender. Another Liberals person. are having to not go to work now. They're just sleeping for weeks. We've oh. asked you a case of a 69-year-old guy who literally lit himself on fire in a coffee shop. Let him oh, yeah, that happened just a few fire. days ago. Seriously. It, we this whole because place. Of the election results. So, see, the thing is, people say, where's the footage of the guy with the gun? You're in your car. You've just eaten. A guy runs up and pulls a gun out. You don't, I mean, you're just like, ugh. So, I'm not bitching. You're going to get it on tape. We have to go document it now. <laughs> oh, but it's a Van Zandt. The lady runs off with our change. So, let me get to this part. Lady runs off with our $100 bill, doesn't come back for like 45 minutes to an hour after we complain and bitch and go, hey, man, we need our change. This is ridiculous. So she comes back and throws the thing on the table with the, and the money just kind of falls out or whatever. And then she walks off again. Then everyone in the bar is like, I just don't know if I can be here right now. And they all <laughs> leave. And it, it's just me and three other guys wearing Trump shirts and was stuff. Was John there? Yeah, Big John. I love that guy. <laughs> and and we're sitting Facebook here and everyone way. leaves. The okay. whole thing clears. And this guy comes up to me. He's like, I just saw you post something on Twitter saying you were here. I figured there was some triggering going on. He's like, where's everybody at? This place is usually pretty busy. I was like, well, apparently a Trump T-shirt has offended them so bad that everyone... Well, here's the deal. It's like open there. carry. You have to do it to prove the Second Amendment's not outlawed. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I wore hats and stuff out and got a few things, and I'd go out to restaurants, even put, like, stuff in a koozie and said, Trump's my president. 
I've got to do it now. I've got to go out because we've got to like show them it's okay that we want to cut your taxes. It's okay we're not out to destroy America. I love doing it. it is the you do. You like it. That makes me so nervous. I can't. I, I, I'm not. Wait, what's I'll that? be honest, man. I'm a little concerned. It, it's literally like going into a war you zone think. for no reason. Right, I, I got to go to calls because Steve's been holding. Uh, again, we got Margaret Howe, and of course, we've got uh, Joe Biggs here with us. Folks, I'm not exaggerating. These people are crazy, mm -hmm. and they're disinviting their families. <laughs> that is so crazy. Do had two family members call me and go, now watch your mouth at this. You don't want to be petitioning too much on the air. I get it. Like, <laughs> watch your mouth, boy. You come here. My mouth shut, you understand? My family's all from like Clemson, South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, mm -hmm. Charlotte. So they're good old boys. They're, they're, they're like, yeah, Trump, man, that's my president right there. Hell yeah. <laughs> they're always calling me like, man, I saw you on InfoWars. Yeah, Trump. Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> if you were for Hillary, they wouldn't say don't come around. Uh, I, they probably would because they'd be like, man, this guy fell far from the tree. He is not part of this clan. <laughs> He's not part of this group whatsoever. Well, okay, well, you're okay, well, in my experience, I've never seen conservatives act like this. I, I mean, I mean look, I'm, I'm in close. They're look, worse than the liberals. Look, I'm if, 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 I, if, I, worse. if I owned a bar and someone came in with the I'm with her T-shirt on, let them. Who cares? I, I might just sit here and kind of laugh inside my head and go, oh, that's that's kind of interesting. So, you know, why do you like her? And I would engage in a conversation. And I would ask him, would you like a diaper? <laughs> no, I'd say, what kind of beer do you want? Because you know what? Regardless of red or blue, guess what I'm looking for? Money. Because I'm a business owner. Exactly. That's the whole thing. And the fact that you would deny money, I even looked at the guys like, dude, I would have given you a $100 tip if you would have been cool. And he's just like, uh, 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 let's get out of here. Dude, all I know is this guy <laughs> bowed up, chased me out, and then showed me his gun. And I'm just like, is this really happening? Well, I thought this guy was going to have a heart attack from his uh, overusage of steroids. And he was just going like, <laughs> and it took four of his little girls to come pull him He was just acting tough and, for the And John's just like, oh. You know, if you come over here, I'm just going to grab you by your your skull and throw you down the at the, the walkway. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, you're racist <laughs> for a T-shirt, dude. Red cloth and some white right here. Like that's that's enough to get you thrown in jail. Ah, these people are crazy, assault. man. These people are nuts. <laughs> like I just don't get it. I, I, the one guy comes by, goes, "F you, Alex Jones," and the next guy runs up with a gun. Oh, I, I drive up and down the road just playing like Trump songs and stuff that I've found that people have made. And I'll sit there with my Make America Great Again hat on. And uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pushing buttons, but who cares? That's the whole point, though. I should be able to walk around and not feel scared for my life because I... No, no, I agree. Instead really. of getting intimidated, we've got to really double down. And oh, of course. But, but be careful, folks. These people are crazy. And they're entitled. <sighs> Steve, sorry to make you whole. You were finishing up your point about what you want from Trump. What I want to see from Trump? Well, uh, uh, I want to see his taxes cut straight up mm -hmm. and down. I mean, my God, I'm paying $2,100 a year for just tax for his truck. I know my taxes is almost as much as is almost as much of sometimes more than what I actually make. I you know. know I was talking to my accountant. And property and taxes and everything. It's, it's crazy, you know. But I mean, what are what are these? You know, go back to what you you guys were just talking about. And Joe, I love you, man. Thank you, sir. You're, you're oh. the dude. Uh, you know it, it's you know, but be careful out there, man, because this country is a tinderbox. You know, out there just ready to implode, and this is a Exactly where the, the 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 handlers of the handlers want us. So, what are these people going to do though when the NWO trials start? We had Nuremberg for World War II. Here, this, I this know it's not about vindictiveness. We've got to we've got to cut the cancer out. They've got to be prosecuted. And, and you know, listen, I agree with you. We shouldn't stir stuff up. But if we don't exercise our free speech, they mm -hmm. win. And so that's why I'm going to start, I guess, every week going around with a Trump shirt downtown. It's just like a muscle. If you don't use it, you get muscle atrophy, and it goes away. Well, I like how you take it, instead of making it a bummer, make it a big joke. Oh, it's funny, though. Like, I sit there, and, like, the guy was so mad, and I was laughing. I was even, like, trying to tell the girls around him. I was like, you, you do you understand how ridiculous this is? This guy, in the middle of everybody, just— Trump is our president. Coach. He ripped his right. shirt off in the middle of the freezing night— no one wants to see that. And second of all, it took four of your little girls to calm you down and pull you away because you were so triggered by a T-shirt. When people get out of here, when they're not choosing between groceries and health care anymore, when they're making money, when they see opportunity, this is going to change. It's going to take some time. You know how many people I, that are going to come apologize that him, when their when their paycheck gets five hundred dollars bigger a week? They'll just they, bitch. They get, <laughs> oh, they're going to all I'm be apologizing. Oh, screw you, Trump, for cutting my taxes. <laughs> Piece of filth. Oh, I, I knew I, there's going to be so there's going to be like a long list of people. I've already got names of people like, oh, you didn't like me because of this, this and that. And then I'm going to wait in a couple of years. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I actually came around. He's pretty cool, man. <laughs> I'm like, you think so? Maybe. All right, great point, Steve. Thank you. Let's go ahead and take another call here. Who's been home the longest? Jesse. 
Jesse in Texas, you're on the air worldwide. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, I was calling to say that I think that uh, that Trump, yeah, he is doing the smart move, um, kind of distanced himself from Hillary. I think that they are going to actually eventually go after her. I think it's just uh, to kind of get people to cool down yeah, on that. Yeah, I think that. so with Sessions, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a chess move. We'll I mean, see. We'll see what at, happens. Look at him when it he... It better would... be a chess move, but go ahead. Go ahead, Jesse. And then I was uh, that about how you are talking about the families. Yeah, and um, my wife and I, um, her side of the family are all Trump supporters, and then my side of the family, um, I'm I, I voted for Trump. I'm I'm not an idiot, um, but my mom, my brother, and sister, they're all pretty much brainwashed. And um, I mean, my mom, <laughs> my mom's coming to Thanksgiving. My brother said he had to work, but he does live in L.A. But he did block my wife on Facebook um, after she started. I mean, because we're not afraid to try and wake people up and i mean we've been very active on social media well guess what jesse you won you know, and the censors failed didn't they <laughs> but I you know, mean, the thing is, when they when they when they put stuff on facebook disagree with me i let them be there right. we don't block people we want them on our side they, they they're just all into how they're in control sorry jesse go ahead yeah but it's just uh, the, the entire election is like i'd go in and see them posting stuff and then go into the main you know comment boards where there's like you know hundreds of thousands of comments and all these people arguing and every time I'd go in and, you know, I like, could see these people, they were, you know, they seemed like they were trolls or something. I'd just shut them down with facts. And, I mean, it's so easy to shut people down when you have the facts behind you. And it's just amazing how many people still, when you present them with solid facts, they 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 just still don't believe it. They, well, if you, well, if you they, they just change the subject. It's cognitive dissonance. They're, they're, they're delusional. They're, 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 here's the good news. Human intelligence, human action beat AI, beat Zuckerberg, and beat the Soros trolls. They spent $50 million, they admit, just the Democrats and Soros on bots and fake trolls, and we kicked their butt blue. So the good news is Humet. Red. Red. Exactly. <laughs> Humet. Good point. Bloody. Humet defeated AI. In the first robot war, we win! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just amazing. But yeah, my sister, yeah, she didn't call it all about <laughs> coming to Thanksgiving. I don't think she's coming. She's, um, but I mean, my mom and sister both live in Austin. That's where I'm from. Uh, I live in Fredericksburg. Um, just when I came back from school, I just couldn't. Uh, the city had changed so much, and it was just. No, I hear you. Austin just, uh, is a great there. place, but uh, man, the damn commies are so hard to deal with. Thank you for the call. Great point. It's the only yeah. city surrounded by Texas. Mm. Well, I mean, here's it's the deal. like Portland in the middle of Texas. Well, the thing is, they're so intolerant, and they're so weird, and then they want our guns. But why'd you come here then? Mm -hmm. No, it's funny that you bring that up. So if you pull up Facebook and you look on the right, the trending thing, it shows that one of the top things that's trending says Hillary Clinton. And it goes, oh, my God, Hillary Clinton has now retaken the popular vote. And is this enough to spark a revolution? And it's like all these little articles I just saw, like when I was sitting back there, were like, should we start a revolution over this? How are you going to start a revolution? Well, they're trying to. December 19th, there's a vote before the electorate, the 4.5 million to, to reevaluate their decision. They're, they're trying to. They're trying oh, to they're going after the electors. They're going after uh, what's happening in the states. They're trying for the Constitutional Convention that the electors are getting threats. The thing is, she stole five states. She had three million dead people and others vote. Trump won. We've got to get stories out, like I've been doing, exposing the fact that Trump really won the popular vote. This is a fraud. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, get your Trump is my president shirt at InfoWars.com today. We've got big news breaking from the Army Times. We'll get to that in just a moment. But what's really unfolding here is the total discrediting of the con artists running globalism. Their big stuff suit con game is coming to an end. A few more calls we're about to take, and... We'll host some of the next hour with David Knight here with Margaret Howe. And, of course, we have uh, Joe Biggs here with us and, and some other news articles we're going to hit on. But but seriously, uh, the, yeah, the fourth hour. Oh, Paul is fourth hour. I was told David Knight was fourth hour. Uh, now I've been given more information. But uh, here we have Trump is my president shirt, a collector's item. It says um, legalized freedom on the back, Infowars.com. So get yours today. And we have big specials right now at Infowarsstore.com on different nutraceuticals, uh, up to 50% off on things like colloidal silver, 20% off on Survival Shield X2, and your purchase of the products makes it all possible. So I salute you all and thank you repeatedly. Okay, getting into this new news. Uh, all right, so Military Times just came out with an article acknowledging domestic terror threat. Pentagon says troops, recruiters can carry concealed guns. 
U.S. military personnel can now request to carry concealed handguns for protection at government facilities, according to new Defense Department directive issued last week in response to a series of deadly shootings over the last seven years. So was Obama blocking that the whole time? Uh, more than likely. Oh, it was admitted. And now what do you make of him ordering the drones to stand down on the southern border? I mean, that that's a really helpful tool. I mean, uh, Josh Owens and I had a chance to go out and stay for the week mm -hmm. in Arizona with a guy named Glenn Spencer. And he, he has his own private drones. Yeah, he's got these drones that shoot up out of the ground that go off these seismic readers that can tell your foot traffic. And they go up and then they send live feed back to him. And then he can call the Border Patrol and, hey, you got five, six guys here that are walking up. They're armed. They're not armed. They're carrying drugs or smuggling human beings, whatever it may be. And it's a really effective way. I mean, I think it's a great You're idea to have. You're talking about the S2, Ruth, that they were ordered to stand down on October 1st. No Border Patrol agents on this on this one route that is known for smuggling. It's That, that makes no, like, okay, really? And then we brought you an article, Alex, about how... Uh, the president is most likely going to free these asylum seekers that are being held in facilities before off before he leaves office because you know he's got a lot uh, a lot going on with that. He's he's got to make sure that at least he can put one dent in Trump's immigration policy. I agree. Isn't the best part of all this having got the fake news yet? I'll introduce with Paul after calls and then let him take over. Isn't the best part Trump calling in the mainstream media and chewing him out and saying, I hate you, you're well, a liar. I loved it because they all thought they were being invited. They're like, oh, yes, <laughs> Trump's going to bring me up. To <laughs> we're the mainstream Howard. media. We're in charge. Well, Blitzer's <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to bring my champagne just like it was. Such a corporate globalist hat. Yeah. They're not media. And Trump's like, you're fired. You're a liar. You're garbage. And then they go, oh, my God, it was like a firing squad. They were just shooting us down the entire We time. lied about him and told these lies, and we lost. And now he isn't rolling over to us and letting us run our lives. <laughs> he calls Alex Jones up and thanks him. <laughs> Man, oh, my God. Could you imagine just being that fly on the wall? I just want to sit there and listen to him chew these people out. And like you and Owen were saying earlier, could you imagine? Like, that's something that all of us, every American who's been lied to our entire lives by these We've all screamed at the television set. Let's jam in one call before break. Eddie in Arizona. Eddie, you're on the air. Go ahead. I'll be super quick. Uh, I'll be very quick, buddy. I got uh, two quick points, and I'd like to talk to the, the, all the listeners about supporting you at the end. Uh, number one, um, I really want to see Millie Weaver be the D.C. correspondent. The InfoWars flag needs to be there. Um, you're almost ready to go 24 hours, bud. I think a lot of these people you've got right there now can do half-hour spots. Um, uh, we're ready to be the uh, never be able to be called uh, fake or anything. They need to be there, and the, the questions need to be asked um, that we all want answered. Number two, um, Donald Trump, second guessing Donald Trump. I did it this morning too. Is really idiotic. I agree with you guys. Um, it's just a head fake. Um, he knows there's going to be another big drop. He's being the good guy saying, I'm not going to prosecute, but in light of all this new evidence from the data drop, uh, we have to prosecute her because the pedophile rings, all this stuff. It's good, but he's looking like the good guy now, and his IQ must be like 170. So he's like ahead of the game, but it's almost time for InfoWars. Hold on, don't hang hours. up, Eddie. Stay there. We'll be right back. Proof will be in the future, but we'll see. Fourth hour straight ahead, InfoWars.com, for my show. Your local station doesn't carry it. Infowars.com forward slash show. And spread that link. The enemy hates it. Uh, Paul Watson is going to be hosting today. Hot day of the night. Uh, and so he's coming up at about 10, 15 after. Margaret Howe is here with us. We also have Joe Biggs. A lot of calls to get to. A lot happening. A lot of history unfolding. We didn't even get to a lot of the stories you guys have, like Ron Paul warning oh of a false flag. And we'll go to some calls in a moment. But Ron Paul warning of a false flag to get Trump into a war. I think that's a really... Prescient warning, Margaret. Well, he points out that the neocons, they were talking about war before 9-11 happened, conveniently, on mainstream media. They were going on and, and talking about, you know, uh, you know, things that would get us into war, frankly. And uh, it just this article, we've got it up on our website. It was written by Steve Watson, and it highlights the fact that we could see another false flag. You know, I, I love Dr. Paul. I really respect him. He put together that amazing fake news list. He's always right on cue. And uh, for him to come out and say this, I'm just hoping that doesn't happen. But it's, it's unbelievable. We've got the shadow government that's still very much intact in Washington. Mm -hmm. And we could see something like this happen. What do you think? It's definitely a possibility. I mean, who was it that came out with, or was it one of the WikiLeaks where they talked about there was a uh, an actual shadow government that was operating on the seventh floor that was making all these uh, secret deals? That they were the ones. Well, they call it seventh floor. Yeah, they go as you know, Bilderberg shadow government. You know, seventh floor. They're like what? What? Even their own men are like, there's a something shadow. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a possibility. I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, they're desperate. They're trying to do whatever they can to somehow. Oh, oh I agree with Paul. They're going to try something the next 56 days. Mm -hmm. They're not going to just let this happen. I mean, they're arrogant. But think about mm -hmm. this. This is happening right when the military is all of a sudden saying, well, due to domestic terror threats. By the way, Obama's ordered the drones to stand down. Mm -hmm. By the way, folks, uh, we just got a bat emergency message from Roger Stone. Yes, get him on right now. I don't want to cut into Paul's time. It's hard to get him to even host one day. But Paul should be hosting like two, three days a week. He's so damn popular. Uh, but uh, he does a great job. Paul's coming up. But uh, Roger Stone has some breaking news. He never does this, so it must be big. Let's get Stone on right now. Uh, go ahead and call Stone right now. We'll, we'll take a few more calls here. Uh, Eddie in Arizona, anything else? Yeah, bro. Um, I just wanted to say, I'm telling you, uh, uh, we need Billy Reader with, with the uh, InfoWars flag there in D.C. asking important questions. I think she can do 15 minutes of content a day. You got Margaret Howe. She's good for a half-hour content a day. You got Joe Biggs. He's good for a half-hour. No, no, I agree. Boss, All of it costs money. All, look, look, you buy the products. Every, we've delivered on every front. You buy products. You support us. You'll see more people. More correspondence, more more defeats of the globalists, more victory. Dollar signs mean victory. I need your prayers. I need you to spread our material. I need you to buy our products. That's all I'm asking for, brother. Um, I've, I've done it for years. I've been a long time. I know. And, 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 and let me ask you a question. Member. Have you I seen three Hillary for prison shirts? Gave sir, sir, have gifts. you seen us Everyone deliver? needs to get off their butts and support it. Everyone needs a shortwave uh, solar-powered radio. Every person in America needs one. Alex sells them. Everybody, Anthroplex, you'll be pole vaulting out of bed, guys. Everybody needs these products. You guys got to get up and do it. Make it happen. We're on the edge of making it happen. That's it. Well, thank you. I mean, since you mentioned the products, uh, look, I'm not bitching at folks. If they want to support us, they can. I'm just saying, have we not delivered? Have we not? We not I mean, have we not? So, when folks buy the products, the money, like 95% of it, will go to the war. I mean, I'm telling you, folks, you energize us. This is one place you know. You buy something, it goes into direct energy into a fight against the globalist. I mean, I am so committed. I'll give my blood to this fight. Go ahead. Any other points? He hung up. Well, you heard him. He said anthroplex, pole vaulting out of bed. <laughs> Wonder what that means. <laughs> All right, stay with us, guys. We're going to uh, come back after break, right after this quick break. We've had a lot of crazy computer stuff going on at GCN today. GCN, I even said GCN, some new computers. But they seem to be in their own little world up there. Not for long. The globalists are now tasting Americana steel. Paul Watson, we're having Skype trouble with from England. We'll be on in the next five, ten minutes. But it's perfect timing because Roger Stone... Never calls in, hardly ever, and says, oh, emergency, I want to come on air and talk about breaking news. Let me guess. I bet it's dealing with Conway announcing that Trump won't go after Hillary. Well, it's not Trump's job to go after Hillary. It'll be the attorney general. And I would think Jeff Sessions being chosen for the nomination for confirmation in the Senate as the attorney general would be a major signal that justice is being done. But we'll find out. Right now, it was over a week ago, I learned from sources. I talked to Stone, he'd heard the same thing, that Chelsea Clinton was contacting uh, Ivanka Trump, Trump's daughter, and saying, please don't go for my mommy and my daddy. We're going to find out right now from Roger Stone. Roger Stone, what's the breaking news? Well, uh, I, I am uh, uh, somewhat stunned, and I'm hopeful, like <laughs> Alex, like, as so many other supporters of Donald Trump are, that... Uh, Ms. Conway is uh, somehow incorrect. I think you're exactly right that this is not a question immediately for the president. It's a question for the grand jury. Uh, and that the, the either we are a nation of laws uh, or we are a nation of men. Now, we were told over and over again uh, during Watergate that uh, no person was above the law, in all honesty. The criminality of the Clintons is such that we don't even have a full catalog of the crimes for which they could be. It dwarfs Nixon. Mm -hmm. Correct. The, uh, uh, the assertion by FBI Director Comey that the 650,000 emails controls no, uh, contains no damning evidence against the Clintons is false. NP NYPD was pressured to go along with that narrative, uh, lest justice 
indict a number of uh, officers in the uh, in the uh, Garner, the Eric Garner controversy. So NYPD was blackmailed through Election Day because they've seen the emails and they know otherwise. So you, you, you I mean, I think that a, a special prosecutor, someone of true independence, has to look at the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton email scandal so far, the 650,000 Wiener Huma uh, treasure trove of emails to determine whether some charges should be brought against Hillary or Bill uh, or Chelsea uh, or Podesta or, or many of their co-conspirators. And I personally just think I, I, I am hopeful that this doesn't reflect the president's view. Now, I'm going to post uh, a, uh, a petition at StoneColdTruth.com to uh, President elect Trump to uh, Jeff Sessions, who, although I have some disagreements with him on uh, uh, on uh, marijuana policy and drug law reform, nonetheless, I think is a solid, uh, you know, law and order uh, uh, patriot and a guy who has uh, had the courage to be there for Donald Trump, unlike, say, oh, I don't know, Mitt Romney, uh, kind of a almost insulting uh, boarding party. Romney, a man who called Donald Trump a con man, a fraud. It's not just, you know, respectful disagreement uh, or, you know, Donald isn't really qualified. It's not even opposition it, it was uh it was uh needlessly personal uh and uh, obviously turns out to be wrong isn't it ironic mitt struggled in ohio trump carried ohio easily i don't know if we have an audio issue here yeah do we have his mic on guys uh can you hear joe Beggs? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I could not. Um, no, I, yeah. I said the look on, on Mitt Romney's face when he came out of that meeting with Trump, it was like, uh, you know, like a, a son who's done something bad and his dad just spanked him. He came out and kind of had his face down. And he had the smirk on his face and mm. quickly went to the vehicle. And I was like, man, I was like, what the hell just happened? Let me raise this. And then we're going to get Stone back on, obviously, some special reports over the holiday at Infowars.com. Uh, but what do you make of him reportedly bringing in the MSM and saying, I hate you, you're traitors, you're liars? You're scum. I think it's important to degrade them and let everybody know this isn't real media and not just acquiesce to the same old game where they run the show. Uh, I'm uh, in uh, total agreement. Uh, look, somewhere Dick Nixon is smiling. Next, uh, Trump brings in the mainstream media who who maligned him, who lied about him, who who battered him day in, day out with half-truths, with, with, with falsehoods. Uh, the New York Times on the day uh, after his election, said that he ran a campaign where he actively disparaged black people, uh, 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 gay people, and so on. No, he did not. Nor did he disparage Arabs. He did not. Th those are falsehoods. Uh, and so he is, he is absolutely right. CNN became a veritable arm of the Clinton campaign. The, the mainstream media, who at least in the 60s and 70s pretended some objectivity, were, they were hysterical in their desire to defeat Trump. Uh, if, you, if you figure that Soros uh, and his other left-wing associates spent, let's call it a billion and a half, 500 million to the quasi-criminal activities of David Brock, 500 million in the hands of a man who admire, you know, who Joseph Goebbels would be proud of mm -hmm. uh, in their effort to attack you, me, as all proven by uh, the WikiLeaks and by proven by James uh, uh, O'Keefe, uh, I guess because we're MVPs. Uh, so uh, it, is, it is extraordinary that if you add the value of the CNN assault on Trump, let's call that two billion of, of advertising, and the fact that Trump and his patriotic supporters probably raised and spent two hundred and seventy million. It's the greatest that. David versus Goliath story in history. And and uh, I think you've got a lot to say. If you want to continue taping, I can get Paul Watson here. We can connect in ten minutes. I can interview you for the nightly news. So much unfolding. But StoneColdTruth.com. Thank you so much, Roger Stone.
for joining us. Uh, Paul Watts is taking over. Let me talk to you during the break. I mean, Alex, I think this is a crucial moment. We have to demand justice for Hillary Clinton. That's why the mm -hmm. Hillary for Prison 2017 T-shirt is so crucial. It's uh, coming out next week. I salute you. Uh, I salute your entire staff. Alex, you guys uh, are doing a phenomenal well, let job. Let me just say, Florida looks awesome right now. I wish I was there. Well, I'm in the bunker uh, preparing uh, my book. I will be publishing a book called The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution. It will be uh, in bookstores on uh, Inauguration Day. It's a Herculean task. To I know, clean Herculean, cleaning out the stables. I look forward. Stay there. We're about to go to break. I'm turning over to Watson. Let me talk to you real quick because there's more you have to say. I want to tape it and put it out for the Nightly News tonight. Roger Stone, StoneColdTruth.com. You guys are awesome. Nightly News coming up. We'll tape some more stuff with all this great news you wanted to cover as well. A lot of things happening. But let's let him take over. We'll skip this network break so we get some more time. Paul Joseph Watson from London. We have you. Please take over. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, we'll stick on the subject of um, Trump's announcement, or at least Kellyanne Conway's announcement, that there won't be a special prosecution, at least at this time, of Hillary Clinton. It's interesting on the one hand because, of course, you've got a lot of anger over this. You only need to look at the comments on Infowars.com to see that. And so we're not downplaying that anger. One thing I did notice before I go into the main meat of this issue is that the first media outlet to criticize Trump over this was Breitbart.com. Now, you've had the leftist media for the past two weeks whining and wailing about how now the alt-right is now in control of everything and sure, they gonna... say it's state-run media. Yeah, they're saying it's state-run media, and the very first outlet to criticize Trump is Breitbart.com, so that goes out the window. And Bill Mitchell, who's been on this show, obviously he was proven completely correct in saying the polls were rigged. He's got a lot of uh, political capital after that. He basically says that this is Trump playing the long game, that this is a pardon blocker. So if Trump had gone after Hillary even before he became president, that would give Barack Obama the excuse to claim that there was a witch hunt against Hillary Yeah, that's Hillary the calculus Clinton. I see. Yeah, and that that would have given him the, the excuse, the justification to pardon Hillary Clinton. So, you know, Mitchell makes the point that Obama's manipulation of the FBI and the Attorney General was part of why people voted for Trump, right? They wanted that swamp drained, so they don't want Trump interfering politically in those areas. So... You know, Bill Mitchell thinks they're playing the long game that uh, the AG uh, Sessions is going to come out with the FBI a couple of months into a Trump administration. No, I agree. If Trump goes after him now, they'll try to block Sessions even harder. Yeah, so as we know, Alex, he's being presidential. He has to wait until, what is it, January 19th, until he can uh, really start to get his teeth sunk into these issues. I understand the anger, but then you look at TPP, he's already pulling you out of that. You look at the wall which for weeks people said, for months, people said, oh, he's never going to build the wall. Glenn Beck, Trump is never going to build the wall. I'll apologize if he builds the wall. LA Times, all the rest of them are in the article. Now there's this um, screenshot, this photograph taken of Trump meeting with his Homeland Security expert. And what does it say? 2,000 miles build the wall rapidly. So he's fulfilled his promise on TPP. Looks like he's going to do it on the wall. So just have a little patience. I mean, I understand the anger, but you can see what Trump's doing. He's trying to be presidential. He's trying to not give Obama that excuse to claim there's a witch hunt against Hillary and to give her that presidential pardon. So, you know, we'll we'll wait and see what unfolds after that. So it's let's all continue yours, with Watson. Let's continue with the news here. Thanks, Alex. Now, what I wanted to talk about is Twitter, first off, because... Of course, we've had this mass purge of so-called alt-right accounts over the past two weeks. Of course, they left it far too late because it was after the election. Now what's interesting is there's a convicted paedophile who was convicted three years ago in the United Kingdom called Ian Watkins. Now, this was a former lead singer, I believe, the frontman of a band called The Lost Prophets. Absolutely harrowing case where he raped a baby. I mean, it's difficult to even read about the details of this case. I'll read it from the NME article. The Twitter account of ex-Lost Profits frontman and convicted paedophile Ian Watkins has recently become active again, despite the singer being in jail. 
Singer Watkins was jailed in December 2013 for 29 years plus six years on license for a serious string of child sex offences, including the attempted rape of a baby. So you've got a convicted paedophile who attempted to rape a baby, whose Twitter account has not only been active for the past three years, it's been verified for the past three years. He started tweeting, or somebody started tweeting from it yesterday, and this account is still active on Twitter. People say, oh yeah, Twitter's a private company, it can ban who it likes, it can keep who it likes. So it's keeping a convicted paedophile. There is a red Milo. carpet for jihadis and pedophiles. Yeah, while banning Milo for criticizing Ghostbusters, while banning people for having different opinions, while verifying the Muslim Brotherhood. This is another article out of Heat Street. Twitter verifies Muslim Brotherhood's account despite pledges to curb hate speech. This is a group that has not only been linked with, but outright endorses violent terror attacks. So people have said all along, well, they don't ban ISIS accounts. Well, there are too many ISIS accounts to ban them all. It's like whack-a-mole, they keep popping up. Okay, they verified the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, that's an application process where somebody, an individual within Twitter, has to make the judgment call on whether to verify the Muslim Brotherhood. What's verification? Well, not only do you get a little blue tick next to the account name, but this verifies your account as an official account. It allows you access to features which normal Twitter users don't have, and it results in your content becoming extremely more widespread. So Twitter, in verifying the Muslim Brotherhood, is directly contributing to the spread of violent terrorist Islamist propaganda. Well, they founded the whole Arab Spring. Why not? Exactly. And again, you know, Saudi Arabia keeps buying more and more stock in Twitter. They're banning Milo for criticizing Ghostbusters. They're banning alt-right people. This pedophile convicted three years ago still has a Twitter account. I mean, it's getting, I mean, I'm getting emails, I'm getting messages. You've all heard about Pizzagate. I mean, it's, it's still, I think it's a kind of mass hysteria. But now you're getting claims that Twitter is not banning people who are sharing child pornography. Now, I haven't looked into that because when you get messages from people saying, hey, Paul, look at this child pornography scandal, obviously I'm not going to click on those links, okay? The UK government just passed a law where internet service providers keep your internet history and share it with the government as and when they like. But those are the claims circulate, circulating today on Twitter. And add to that, a convicted paedophile now somebody is tweeting from his account three years after he was convicted of molesting children. And that's who Twitter thinks should have free speech. Meanwhile, they're banning people for criticizing Ghostbusters. I mean, it's got to the point now where you disagree with someone, you argue with someone on Twitter, and they treat that as harassment. They will report you for responding to their tweet. They will report you for screenshotting their tweet. In fact, let's take a look at another two examples that just came up within the past 20 minutes. This is a tweet. Morning, everyone, except white people. Have an awesome day. I hope a white person dies today. Now, this is interesting because somebody did a little experiment on Twitter where they took tweets from basically Black Lives Matter people and leftists who hate white people, who are racist against white people. It's not reverse racism, it's just racism. And don't forget the mayor of New York came out with a sign that said F whiteness. And then everybody's agreeing, yes, white people are bad. Yeah, that's racism. That is allowed on Twitter. Somebody took those tweets where it was, you know, anti-white hatred, anti-white racism, replaced white for black. They were immediately banned. Okay, you can't have it both ways. You can't allow flagrant racism against white people and not the other way around, because, again, this encourages the real white supremacists, the real, the real neo-Nazis, it actively encourages them to harass people, to be more racist. So, again, it's a complete double standard. They're blocking people for their opinions. Meanwhile, verifying the Muslim Brotherhood, an organization that endorses violent terror attacks, allowing people to keep verified accounts who are convicted paedophiles for three years. I mean, it's no wonder that Twitter's stock is tanking. It's no wonder that that is a sinking ship and why many other platforms, many other social media platforms like Gab 
are now coming to prominence because Twitter has made its decision after the election. I don't expect InfoWars or Alex or myself to be on there for very much longer the way it's going. But, you know, that's just the game. We played it for a while. If they want to become a cesspit for pedophiles and violent Islamists and racists, then that's their business. They're a private company. Good luck to them. Okay, let's move on to some more of this news now. Again, I mentioned this earlier. There was a long-range photo took of uh, Obama, sorry, Trump meeting with Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach, who is a border security and legal immigration expert. They met on Sunday in New Jersey. Now, some people are saying, was this deliberate? But they took a photograph of Trump and Kobach meeting. He was holding a file of papers in his arms. One of them was visible when you zoomed in on the photograph. This is not fake news. People have come out and said, oh, that's photoshopped. It's not photoshopped. Go and look at the original photo and zoom in. It's very easy. This paper is entitled Department of Homeland Security, Kobach Strategic Plan for First 365 Days. And of course, when you zoom in, the paper reads, quote, in addition to 386 miles of existing wall, there is a further 1,989 miles planned for rapid build. Okay, so Trump's taking America out of the TPP, and it looks like, according to this, he's fulfilling his promise on building the wall, confounding left-wing pundits, media outlets, who for months have said that it's not going to happen, that it was all hot air. In fact, I quote some of them in the article. Crooks and liars, quote, this is from January. Well, Trump supporters hate to break it to you, but there is not going to be a wall. So again, they claimed that his promise to build a wall was just rhetoric to rally people up to get people excited at his campaign speeches. TheStreet.com published an article entitled, Here's Why Donald Trump's Mexico Wall Will Never Ever Happen. Glenn Beck, back in May, said this, quote, whether his face was buried in a plate full of Cheetos, I'm not quite sure about that, but he said, one way or another, he's not going to build the wall. And if he does, then I'll apologize to him on that day. But he's not going to build that wall, and Mexico is not going to pay for it. And if he does, I will apologize on that day. That's Glenn Beck. Well, Glenn Beck may be about to eat his words, because according to this document, the wall is getting ready for rapid build to cover the entire 2,000-mile stretch of the border. So we'll wait to see if that happens. CNN which accuses us of being fake news while itself being fake news and interviewing its own cameramen and pretending they're organic anti-Trump protesters, made an outrageously false claim on Monday afternoon. This is out of the Daily Caller. Surprise! CNN makes a false claim and press picks it up. CNN made a false claim Monday afternoon and various journalists ran wild with it. It all started with a segment on CNN's The Lead, which quoted prominent white nationalist figure Richard Spencer as wondering if Jews were actually people. So basically they got this uh, discussion panel around the, talking about the question of whether Richard Spencer, you know, was the head of the alt-right, was linked in with Breitbart, smear association. And then of course, it turns out that the quote in which he said that Jews aren't actually people was never made. <laughs> they completely invented this out of whole cloth it was a complete... Oh, I don't mean to interrupt. Fight. You're going to break. I'm just here watching you. It's amazing. Bloomberg this weekend put out a fake tweet where Trump bragged, oh, I lied to conservatives. Ha, ha, ha. I, I robbed kids. Ha, ha, ha. And then they admit it was all fake. I mean, it's crazy. No, it was completely made up. He was talking about the left wing and the media. Jews weren't even mentioned, but they had a huge fake story about it. And we'll be back to talk about it after this break. Stay with us. We're back live. This is the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. Before the break, we're just getting into CNN. Fake news, which had a panel discussion about an alt-right founder who questioned if Jews were people. And this was not only a panel discussion. While it was taking place, all these other mainstream media slash fake news reporters were blowing up on Twitter about it, freaking out about it, because this alt-right founder. Now, let's get it clear. This Richard Spencer guy, he's a white nationalist, okay? We're not on the same page as him, which is why the media is really interested in holding him up as a leader of the quote alt-right because he's an actual white nationalist. But this quote, supposedly in which he said that Jews aren't people, it doesn't exist. 
you can go to the video of the speech that they're talking about. It's about 40 seconds in. It's in this article. CNN makes a false claim and press picks it up. He's clearly talking about the media and the left. He doesn't even say anyone's not people. He doesn't even say the word Jews. And yet CNN had a whole segment bashing him about it. Everyone was freaking out on Twitter. It was absolutely ridiculous. So again, CNN, the aficionados of fake news coming out with fake news once again. This story just broke. Now, I was going to write a story about this because I saw it just before I came on the air. Absolutely shocking. You want to talk about the tolerant left. We had the tweets earlier that I read out. In fact, let's read those again. Every single day, if you go to Twitter and you type in, you type in the search box, except white people in brackets, you will come up with tweets like this. Morning, everyone, except white people. Have an awesome day. I hope a white person dies today. Here's another one. As of just a couple of hours ago, another peaceful, anti-racist, progressive. Good morning to everyone, except white people who say that we have to give Trump a chance and wish him a successful presidency. Please choke. Okay, these are the anti-racist, tolerant liberals. Well, now you have the national editor of Politico, who got up on Facebook yesterday, of course, deleted it immediately when he got some backlash, gave out the address of Richard B. Spencer, the same guy that CNN made up a fake quote about, and basically called on his followers. Bearing in mind, this is the national editor at Politico, Michael Hirsch, called on his followers to basically go and violently attack someone because of their opinions, because of their beliefs, because, again... The left is tolerant and progressive, embraces diversity, except when it comes to diversity of opinion, then they want to beat you to a bloody pulp. So he gives out the, the address, the home address, doxers Richard B. Spencer, encourages people to go and attack him with baseball bats. This is the national editor of Politico. I was going to write this article because it wasn't up yet, but... Daily Caller scooped it. National Politico editor resigns after publishing home addresses of alt-right icon Richard Spencer advocating for baseball bats because he's a peaceful, tolerant liberal. He wants to cave in people's heads with baseball bats because they have a different opinion to him. And that's progressive. National editor at Politico, Michael Hirsch, resigned after publishing the home address of alt-right figurehead Richard Spencer. This is the big boogeyman that say... You know, the uh, media is pinning everything on because he is an actual, basically a neo-Nazi. But still, you don't advocate killing people no matter what political beliefs they hold. That's intolerant. That's wrong. That's not progressive. Politico confirmed his reg resignation following requests for comment from The Daily Caller. This is his quote. Stop whining about Richard B. Spencer. This is what the national editor of Politico wrote on his own Facebook page. Exercise your rights, as decent Americans, Hirsch wrote in a f public Facebook post. Here are his two addresses. Now, you go down onto the comments, and I don't think they've got them in this article. In fact, they probably have here. So he gets confronted by one of his followers on Facebook who says, you know, what are you talking about? Why are you giving out his addresses? You want us to send him a letter? Well, no. Michael Hirsch, national editor of Politico, responds in a peaceful, tolerant manner and says this. I wasn't thinking of an effing letter. He lives part of the time next door to me in Arlington. Our grandfather's brought baseball bats to bund meetings. Want to join me? So he's openly inciting violence using baseball bats against Richard B. Spencer because he thinks he's a neo-Nazi. Now, bear in mind that leftists think that Donald Trump is literally Hitler. This is the hysteria that they're pushing. This is why Trump wears a bulletproof vest. This is why, reportedly, he carries his own gun. This is why he's got his own security, Secret Service security. This is why Trump Tower is on complete lockdown. This is why there's a no-fly zone around Manhattan. Because the mainstream media, the fake news, this is the only thing they actually try to do properly, is incite crazy people to kill Trump, incite crazy people to attack Trump supporters. This is the national editor of Politico magazine encouraging people 
to take baseball bats to the home address of someone, giving out his address, encouraging people to violently attack him. This is the tolerant left. Meanwhile, the SPLC says that Trump supporters are racist, are violent, are going to commit hate crimes. Meanwhile, this is happening. Hate crimes against Trump supporters over the last two weeks. How many times do we have to see this? But again, it's the same as after Brexit. They said, oh, there's all these hate crimes against foreigners. Turned out it was complete BS. It was because butthurt, whiny leftists were reporting hate crimes, which were basically people disagreeing with them and somebody saying a mean thing on public transport. But again, this is out of the American mirror. Trump supporters' American flag stolen, vandals paint red swastika on front door. A 77-year-old Vietnam War veteran is not going to be intimidated by thugs who spray-painted a swastika on his front door and stole an American flag from his yard. This is Thomas Rodkowski of Silver Spring, Maryland, who late last month had his Trump pen sign stolen from his front yawn front lawn, and now they're attacking his property, stealing his American flag, painting Nazi swastikas on his door, because these people are tolerant, peaceful progressives. Here's another one out of EAG. And again, you look at it on the flip side, as we see over and over again, leftists invent fake hate crimes to make themselves look like victims, meanwhile carrying out actual hate crimes against people with whom they disagree because they're really honest and straight up like that. Bowling Green student lied about attack by Trump supporters. Bowling Green police are exposing Bowling Green State University student Alicia Long as a liar after she allegedly concocted a story about being attacked by Trump supporters the day after his historic election. So again, just like the Muslim who claimed she was attacked, hate crime against her, that proves to be complete BS. Again, Bowling Green police looked into this, found out, she wasn't even in the place where she said it happened. She completely made it up. So again, real hate crimes taking place against Trump supporters. You saw the shocking footage out of Chicago about 10 days ago where the Trump supporter was violently beaten, dragged in his vehicle by a mob who were later charged but not charged with a hate crime. And now we have this. This was up on Infowars.com last night. Not Note, making fun of butthurt leftists deemed a hate crime. So <laughs> somebody actually just left a note outside a Office of Student Diversity building at Edgewood College in Madison saying, quote, suck it up, pussies. That's what the note said. They left it in the window of this building. The officials in charge of this organization, this university, immediately treated it as a hate crime called the Wisconsin police, who are also treating it as a hate crime. Okay, so you look at Wisconsin hate crime law, which relates to race, religion, color, disability, sexual orientation, national origin, or ancestry. So if a crime has been committed and it's motivated by any, th any of those factors, then it's a hate crime. But how is leaving a no gloating about the result of an election how is that a crime? <laughs> okay, for it to be a hate crime, it has to target people. It has to be motivated by racism, by sexism, by xenophobia, any of those factors, fine. But how is leaving a note, which is a joke, in the window of a building, how is that even a crime to begin with? Yet not only is the university treating it as a hate crime, so a Madison, Wisconsin police. So again, they've been beating up Trump supporters, verbally abusing them, choking them, attacking them. Again, barely even in the media narrative. Nobody covers it. Actual hate crimes against people because of their race, because of their political beliefs. Actual hate crimes taking place. Meanwhile, the left is creating fake hate crimes that never happened and then treating joke notes that left in windows saying, suck it up, pussies, as hate crimes. This is how the left behaves. This is why Trump got in in the first place, because many Americans were sick to the back teeth of these whining cry bullies and their completely hypocritical behavior. And on that very subject, Tim Allen, the actor, the home improvement star, has come out and said that Hollywood calls Trump a bully, then bullies anyone who supports Trump. 
Let's get this clip ready. This is Tim Allen on Megyn Kelly last night talking about the supreme hypocrisy in Hollywood. Let's go to the clip. <laughs> so, Gigi Hadid right. mocking our next first lady. Appropriate or not? I don't think it's appropriate in that venue. But again, this is a... It's a I, I'm not a spokesman for Hollywood. I'm, I'm a comedian. <laughs> right. So I, I, I get to tour around the country and I do comedy and I do a show that leans. We have a point of view. I think. Your character is a conservative. Well, a point of view, but it's written by liberals. We have a liberal staff. We have conservatives. That goes without saying. That's, that's redundant. But they're, they, we have a sense of humor about ourselves and there's a point of view and there's a, a place to do it. What I think is, what I find odd in Hollywood is that they didn't like Trump because he was a bully. But if you side, if you had any kind of inkling that you were for Trump, you got bullied for doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's where this, it, it gets a little um, hypocritical to me, is that you, you can now bully people. And you're always on the defense with this. But mostly what I'm finding is there's no source material for, for comedians. Like, if I want to find a joke on the show, we, we go upriver to find the, the joke. And there's no, like, they, this, he was against homosexuals somehow. And I said, where did you? Whoever, Donald Trump? Yeah, whoever said that. And he didn't he wave the flag at the con the convention, yeah, the LBGT mm -hmm. flag? Mm -hmm. And I said that was an unusual... They've got to beef with Mike Pence on that, but Donald Trump, but, no. But, but, but a close association to him, I don't see it. And so he said, well, I can't make a joke about it. I feel like we're playing that game I played when I was a kid at Telephone. Did you ever play that in yeah, high school? Yeah, of course. Where you say something at the beginning. And that's what's happening. It's only funny to me because I'm a comedian. I can do this. But it's very difficult in Hollywood to find anybody, any source material that uh -huh. would... So again, that's Tim Allen last night on Fox News saying basically, you know, Hollywood said that Trump was a bully, he was hateful, he was a bigot, and yet they behave like hateful, bigoted bullies. And this is why James Wood had to basically give up on his career back a few years ago when he vehemently began to criticize Barack Obama. Because doing that in Hollywood is career suicide, because left-wingers aren't very tolerant people. They're all for diversity until it comes to diversity of opinion. Again, this was out of the Huffington Post. We've talked about this before. This was a quote from Victoria Jackson, a former Saturday Night Live cast member, who said, quote, in LA, there is a secret underground group of showbiz conservatives. It started with two people in the year 2000. I was at the fifth or 10th meeting, and now there are over 2,000 people. Again, they don't want to lose their career and conservatives are blacklisted. They have to have secret societies of conservatives in Hollywood because liberals are so intolerant that if they get any inkling of somebody with a different opinion, they will shut down their career in an instant. And you see a little bit of that now with Kanye West, who of course has been a little bit crazy for a few years now, but as soon as he comes out against Hillary Clinton, against the left, and against the celebrity elite represented by Beyonce and Jay-Z. They lock him up in a psych ward. Isn't that interesting? Still trying to get him on the show today. Maybe we can beam that into existence. Let's go on to some other news here in the final few minutes of this segment. Sweden is having to build entire new cities to accommodate the massive influx of Muslim migrants, even as their own population labors under increasing property prices. No property for them, but they're building entire new cities for Muslim immigrants because that's liberal and progressive. Even as their rape skyrockets, even as people are being attacked. But, you know, I guess the solution, as they're doing, is to just give ISIS jihadists jobs and put them in the government. Yes, that's actually now happening in Sweden. The Express reports from over in Germany. Germans are strangers in their own country due to Muslim infiltration. A third of Germans feel they are strangers in their own country due to an infiltration by Muslims, a new study has revealed. A new survey found 34.7% of Germans completely or slightly agree with the view, quote, because of the many Muslims, I sometimes feel like a stranger in my own country. Meanwhile, German court says Islamic Sharia patrol is legal. A German court has thrown out a case against a group of extremist Salafist Sharia police for the second time claiming they have not broken the law. So again, we had the media lecturing us for the past, what, five, six years? Muslim no-go areas don't exist. That's a conspiracy theory. Meanwhile, film crews go to these areas and are attacked. We were chased out of one ourselves. Now they're saying that these Muslim Sharia patrols, where they go up to people on the street, groups of Muslims in high visibility jackets, 
If they're drinking alcohol, they tell them to stop. If they're holding hands, they tell them to stop. They harass people who they think might be gay. A court in Germany has said that is not illegal because they were not wearing uniforms that were, quote, suggestively militant. So I guess they have to be wearing, you know, full camo and body armor for that to be intimidating because it's not intimidating at all, is it, for six or seven Muslim guys in high visibility jackets to come up screaming at people, telling them to stop drinking alcohol, stop holding hands. No, that's not intimidating at all. Okay, that's now legal in Germany. So good luck with that. Angela Merkel seeking a new term. We'll see what happens. Meanwhile, over in Airstrip 1, Milo Yiannopoulos has basically been put on a government extremist list for speaking out against Islam. They banned him from giving a speech at his own school after the government's counter-extremism unit intervened. So Milo has been out giving speeches about actual extremism in terms of Islamists. Now, he tries to come back to the UK and give a speech in front of his old school, warning people about the dangers of extremism, and he, as a gay man, is put on an extremist list. Absolutely chilling. This is what Milo said on Facebook, given that he's banned from Twitter. Much more press to come. The government's anti-extremism unit should focus on terrorism, not harassing homosexuals. He calls it chilling. It's caused national astonishment. And it is absolutely disgusting. We'll be back with the final segment on The Alex Jones Show. Don't go away. We're back for the final segment of the Alex Jones Show live on this Tuesday edition. Before we get back into a few final news stories, I just wanted to mention, because again, we're not funded by Middle Eastern dictatorships like CNN. We don't have to produce propaganda specials for the Bahraini government while they're beating up protesters on the street. No, we rely on you, our supporters, buying the products. That's all we ask of you. And we have a Black Friday free speech special 30% 30% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine. Our flagship nascent iodine formula, Survival Shield X2, is available for 30% off at InfoWarsLife.com for a limited time as part of our Black Friday free speech special. InfoWars and other liberty groups are now being targeted by mainstream media, fake news, controllers, and George Soros funded attack dogs who are trying to shut down free speech and an open web. That's going on right now on Twitter. Eventually, they're going to cut off that revenue for us which is why we need your support more than ever by getting the Survival Shield X2 Nation iodine 30, 30% off InfoWarsLife.com for a limited time as part of the Black Friday free speech special. We've also got discounts on other products, BioPCA, as well as the all-new Brain Force at InfoWarsLife.com, brand new formula. Get it, support us, get the word out, InfoWarsLife.com. Let's hit a few final news stories here. Of course, in France, we've got a presidential election coming up next year. Fion, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Fion lead in right-wing primaries throws far-right Le Pen off balance. They're already announcing the end for Marine Le Pen, and we know how well that worked out with Trump. Francois Fion shock lead in Sunday's primary to choose a conservative candidate in the next year's French presidential election has thrown the far-right National Front completely off balance. It's over for Marine Le Pen. The mainstream media fake news has said so, so I guess it must be true, even though they're wrong on everything else. So basically, the guy who looks set to win the conservative candidacy is somebody who is an actual conservative. They're saying they don't have much dirt on him. He's for controlling the threat posed by Islam, which, of course, is massive in France because they've kowtowed to it for over a decade. He's more conservative than the other challenger, Alan Juppé, whose message is a happy reconciliation of multicultural France, because that's proven really successful, hasn't it, over the past couple of years? So basically they're saying that because this guy is quite conservative that he will easily defeat Marine Le Pen which we saw in the Republican primaries with, you know, people like Chris Christie. They had very harsh conservative rhetoric, turned out to be completely worthless. But of course, you have to remember, according to leftist logic, in the US election, not supporting Hillary meant that you hated women, okay? She had a vagina, she was going to be the first female president, 
Anyone who opposed that hated women. So by that score, by that logic, everyone who doesn't support Marine Le Pen, because she would be the first female president of France, everyone who doesn't support that hates women. And this is a key message that we need to get out to liberals as we draw closer to this presidential election. France has never had a female president. It's bigoted and sexist to not support Marine Le Pen because she has a vagina. Okay, hashtag I'm with her. Let's get that message out there. There's a new study out of Science Direct which shows that liberals are more prone to criminal behavior. Well, what a surprise. Political ideology represents an imperfect yet important indicator of a host of personality traits and cognitive preferences, one of which includes criminal behavior. We've had the study before where poorer conservatives are more generous than wealthy liberals. Now a new scientific study finds that liberals are more prone to criminal behavior, which is not a surprise given that they always want to take things away without having earned them. That's going to wrap it up for the show. InfoWars Nightly News tonight. Alex will be back 11 to 2 tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Breaking news at InfoWars.com.